Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello everybody and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name's Andy, Corporate Commander TFW, and I'm joined by the Rising Storm himself. It's Mikey G. Wolf V3. Hello, Mikey. Trust no fathers in your life. They will turn and they will usually try to take over the world. No, I know that is related to us talking about Common Rider earlier, but it mm. could also just be related in general to life, I suppose, yep. couldn't it? Yep, life. Like, if you have a dad, do him in now, for the world's <laughs> sake. Well, isn't that like a, a thing in, in a lot of fiction, like throughout time, where the, the son usually kills the father for yeah. whatever reason? And it's like, ooh, you've got a need of his complex. No, he had a plan involving a spaceship. That's right. Or a black hole. Or robots. Or taking your art and selling it off. Mm. Or being a ghost. <laughs> or that one time he turned his daughter into a stone. Which one was that? That was Wizard. Oh, that was Wizard. Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure. Mm. Yeah. It, it, just, 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 they're, they're all trouble. All her fathers. Now but trouble. <laughs> Nothing but trouble. The second you come into the world, you should go for him like babies launching themselves at the turn <laughs> for, the of, for the good of humanity. <laughs> well, what you been, how, how's Mikey doing this week? Are, are, you, are you doing good? I'm alright, I'm alright. What about Andy? Yeah, can't complain, can't complain. But we've actually got some good Transformers news to talk about, some yeah. neat stuff, which is quite a nice surprise. Mm. Uh, we're going to start off small and then ramp it up, as as that's the, the usual format of the show, as you should be aware by now. So we're going to start mm-hmm. off with third-party new- uh, news. Three p- uh, third-party news. Uh, Mech- third-party news. News. Boys. Mech fans toys are doing the MS-19 Flame Commander. That's the legend skill Rodimus Prime figure. Mm. Uh, and I don't. I think this is one of the ones that isn't based on anything else. They haven't stolen this one, right? No, this is into their original takes. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I, you could say it does kind of look like a scaled-down masterpiece, but Everything does at this. I'd, level I'd argue this. it looks better than the masterpiece. Which one? I, uh, well, since it's the the Rodimus one, I'd yeah, say probably yeah, yeah, that one because that yeah, that on one's on quite one. old as well, and that one had many a delicacy issue, if you remember. Uh, I remember watching Chris's unboxing of that, and he, even when he was taking it out of the box, you could see that he was just he was really trying to justify this purchase. Yeah. <laughs> I I I assume the hot rod that came out later was probably a lot more solid and secure. I hear it's for figure. still flawed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not surprising, but it's not going to break in your hand like this one. It's no. weird to think that the early masterpieces were so fragile, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Um, that's about to be fair. It's kind of amazing to me how durable Grimlock is. Hmm. Yeah, I guess he came out at the right time, or he was just built with it a bit more sturdier than the other ones for whatever reason. Mm. But that's Mega- not what we never. Hate him. Never buy an original Megatron, guys. No, 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 no. Under I'm, any I'm, circumstances. I'm very glad I was able to sell mine. <laughs> uh, for, uh, years ago, before the other, before MP10, no, whatever before version. What, 36? What? Is that what? Are you being serious or are you yeah, joking? Megatron is 36. Okay, I wasn't sure if you're like, well, 3,940. <laughs> well, like, um, run to, f- like, new Optimus is going to be 44. Yeah. And we know there's at least one more after that. So I think fif- they're, they're definitely heading for the 50s. Yeah, it's, it's coming along. Mm. Uh, but we're, we're talking about Flame Commander. So this is their small legend scale from Mech Fans Toys, as mentioned. Mm. It's going to be 12 centimeters tall. It's going to be cartoon accurate, accurate Rodimus Prime. It's going to have an opening chest with a matrix in it, because of course it is. It's going to have the alt mode that can split into the front car, so you can have him hot rod styled if you want. Uh, and the trailer can convert into the shitty battle station thing that it could originally. Uh, there's two accessories, uh, oh, there's two gun accessories, which mm. can be combined into a bigger one. Uh, there's a buzzsaw from that time he was cutting up weeds in the uh, the, the Quintessons planet. Uh, you know what we need? We need a, a, a half-cut fish as well, or a fish you can cut in half. Oh, that would be cool. That would, I, I quite like that. Like it's a like it's an effect part, is what I'm saying, mm. rather than just two halves of the fish that you put on the floor. Like yeah, you, you can attach cruel. it to the chainsaw, so it looks like he's it's splitting and it's like cutting him down the middle. That'd be sick. Um, maybe one day. And of course, what would be a hot rod or Rodimus, I guess, without his target partner, uh, whatever it was called. 
based in the pre eighties and f- our pre late eighties. Uh, Firebolt, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. I was, I was being silly because no, no, no one remembers. Well, I, I never remember them because they were so. The Autobot ones were really boring. I don't remember any of them. I just remember him and Aimless. Uh, Caliber. That was another I'll one. Take your word for it. Yeah, I, I remember that one because it's a good one. <laughs> I remember Fireball because we've had so many of him now. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I remember that's... Aimless because of Misfire. Yes. Yeah, and the, that one just works well. Mm. Well, what do you think of Flame Toys, uh, Flame Commander, or Mech Toys? Fans it looks toys, okay. Guys. Okay. Like, it's I'm legend not... scale, so you got to remember that. It is legend that. scale, but within that context, it looks competent. Um, the the car mode's kind of amusingly dinky. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it look like it doesn't look quite so dinky when it's um the 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 like base car, but it's quite dinky. But when it's the the trailered up um whatever the whatever the Win- Winnebago whatever he is, mm-hmm. um it does look slightly like they've got the front of a fish, okay, or a turtle or something that they put on. Like you know what it looks like? It looks like um uh Go Buster's mech, like one um... of the one of the vehicles with the little animal face in the front. Like a whale. Oh. That's what it is. It's a whale. Okay. Or, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like this. I Repaint thought you were going to say it looks like the bu- uh, bus on from Go Onja. Oh, God. No, you made it better. <laughs> I was thinking Go Busters because they're in the news at the moment. Ah. Because Power Rangers. Beast Morphos is next month. Yeah, but and they're no Go Onja. No, but they do have toys that look like they might actually represent human beings. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Still not. I, I would still say it's not amazing looking, but I'm yeah. more interested in the Legends line for that. But, um. So the robot mode looks competent. Um, I'm amused by the fact that no matter what, the robot mode will never be right because the colors can only be either Hot Rod or Rodimus. I would imagine they'd go with Hot Rod <laughs> colors, to be honest. I, do you know what? I This feels to me like this is based around Rodimus, so I think it'll be darker colors in all honesty. Oh, you think he'll be more uh, of that lavender kind of color? More auburn, whatever he was. Oh, right, um, okay. But no, I think this looks fairly competent, but it doesn't make me go, wow. Look how clever this is. It makes me go, okay, this is done with, you know, they've done, this is done with the knowledge of how to do this kind of figure. Is thing. that just because it's the G1 design? Or is there something no, I just, that you can I, put your finger on? I don't think the engineering looks like it's pushing the buttons out in any way. I don't think the possibility is pushing out anything. I think it's just like, here's our design, completely done, regardless of G1 or anything. Mm-hmm. Like, the fact that Firebolt's posable, I think, is nice. Um, because, you know... The, He'd be they're... small. Yeah, he's going to be wee as all hell, so it's nice they worked that in, but overall I'm just like, okay, looks competently done figure. But, I, you know, competence doesn't necessarily wow me, you know? That's true, that's true. Like, competence is what we should expect under any given circumstance. <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah, what but... we get, but it's what we should expect. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's not something we're, we're used to sometimes, unfortunately. What about you, Andy? What, what do you think of it? Uh... I think it's okay. The the thing I remember is the mech fan toys do stuff that people really enjoy. Like people really love the Bumblebee. They did the mm. the train one at least the hard yes. to steal one. Centurion. That's him. Uh, they really like the sound wave as well. I've I've heard good things about their stuff in general, and their pricing is usually some of the best in the third party market. Yes. Yes. So they they do have the. I'm not saying that this one is cheap. We don't know how much this one's going to cost. But if it's if it's the usual pricing that they go for, it's going to be another kind of fairly cheap priced figure, mm. like maybe twenty quid or something, which would be nice. No, but I can't. I can't perfect. say I'm ever excited by a hot rod or a Rodimus Prime. They're just not my guy. There is that. There is that. Yeah. That's fine. Um, maybe one day we'll see uh, Iron Factory take a hold of it. But the the issue with that is, I think they do the IDW version, which I'm not too hot on. Uh, I'd I'd rather see them do their own interpretation of of a Hot Rod or a Rodimus Prime. I think I would do that. But I I you know what? For the IDW version, I want someone to do a non transforming one. Okay. Like a legend l- scale. Uh, legends. I take legends. I take any scale really. But okay. I was like, gonna I say. I think that design particularly gets compromised by having to transform because he's got such human proportions. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's based off a of Nick drawing, really, isn't it? Yeah, originally? and like he, none of the actual physical toys have gotten it right. Like the SSS and Mastermind, they were close. They're each close enough mm-hmm. that. Uh, but I think a non-transforming version of quite a lot of those designs would be a good idea. 
Akura Karakiri would probably work best mm, for him since they already yeah. do the kind of um, exaggerated proportions on them. Do you know what? Yeah, he'd actually blend in very well with that line. Yeah. Mm. Maybe one um, day. Or even a, like a, even a Farid Ma- Am I crazy or did they say they might be doing him? Who? Akura uh, Karakiri? I'm going to check this for a second because it, it just hit me there. I could be talking out my arse, but Flames Warriors Rocks mm-hmm. from a preview or something like that. Uh, IDW Rodimus. Oh, they are doing one. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there you go. <laughs> December. We've got... Who have we got? We've got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when they revealed... Ah, uh, but they're doing IDW Rodimus, but it's the Don Figueroa one. Uh, mm, who cares? Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Well, I, I mean, people that like the, the nightmare-inducing design, which is fair enough, but... Unless, yeah. it, unless they give him a normal face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really hope they don't. Just for that one time. You want the full nightmare? Just Yeah, yeah. I want like, oh god. And I want like, because he has a scene where his mouth's open. It looks like his jaw split. So yeah. yeah. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, will I take us on? Yeah, yeah. Take us on, Mr. Mikey. Um, this is a small enough one. Um, Zeta Toys via their Weibo have to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Announced that they are doing a G1 Predaking. So this is a full combiner. Um... They've got a line drawing that shows it looks uh, slightly stylized in some places, um, mm-hmm. but largely G1. Um, the animal yes. heads don't look quite normal. Um, and it looks like there's a bit of extra folding or something going on with um, Rampage and Dive Bomb. In in how the heads are tucking in. something mm. It feels like something else is going on there. Um, but Andy, hey, another third party Pretty King. Yeah, late to the party. Very, late, very late, late to the party. Late to the party. Yeah, um, can't say I'm excited. Um, it's just he is another one. I, I, I suppose I'm sure that, that you know there will be a full-on design that comes out the the prototype or a marker, and it'll yeah. excite a lot of people. Uh, but you know this this is the wear that you get when you come out this late. As we've said many times before, you come out this late, people, uh, well, people like me and you at least are going to be much more. Um, I guess, reserved and critical of it, just because we've seen so many at this point. Yeah, like, especially since most of these toys have been in the sort of niche filler range, and apart from the fact, like, the idea for me of, like, oh, I can't buy this Optimus Prime or this character. Why? Well, I've already got one. Mm. It's like, you don't have this one. I mean, the the fact that Hasbro just fairly, I think you could say fairly recently released uh, Predaking has to also be a factor, like, really? You're doing Mm. it now? The, The official ones come out, so... Yeah, yours and has to be real good. <laughs> and it, the the official one wasn't even the first one to the party. No, exactly. No. So I mean, I think to be honest, I think the combiner train, as long as they're doing these same ones, mm-hmm. uh, is kind of running out of steam. There's so like I want to see more Road Caesar or Lyo Kaiser. Yeah, or I there have been a Raiden. few, but not nearly as many. Raiden certainly, because yeah. I don't think Raiden's been touched no, at all on any level. On any level, I mean, we're getting a t- DJD combiner. Come on, guys, we, yeah. can get, we can get a bit more than just Devastator, Predator King, Superion, Bruticus, Menasaur. To be fair, though, that's just Iron Factory going nuts and just being like, <laughs> "Eh, <laughs> we do what we want." <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like I don't have any thoughts on the design. Do you, Andy? Uh, it looks like Predator King, don't it? Mm. Um, Doesn't look bad, but the the real judger will be uh, a a life mock up of it, like a, yeah, a prototype, yeah. not not like a CG render, because that can still like flop at the at the starting line, as it were. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I've got nothing else. You want to take us on? Sure, Mr. Mikey. We talked about Kurukarakiri Kiri uh, yeah. due to Flame Toys, and Flame Toys has shown off in a similar vein the Furai Model O Five Thundercracker. Thundercracker. <gasps> Uh, which you seemed very excited about because I saw you post about it on Twitter on the Moonbase 2. I had no interest in the Sarah Scream, but yeah. This... You're mm. such a fickle boy, Mikey. Yeah, <laughs> it's the <I> same am. <laughs> toy. <laughs> yeah, but it's not Sarah Scream. Yeah, but it's not the Thundercracker you want. No, because like clearly it's missing some key accessories. It has no dog. No dog, no writing desk. No wife. No wife. Where it like, <laughs> I don't do... Although I will say these things are like bigger than you think. Really? How big? Have you built yours yet? No, no. The gear's on the way. Finally. Oh, okay. Um, but I was wow. looking at it. Seems some like sk- it's been in the post for a while. Oh, you know, what things are like. Um, mm. but you know, the size of these things. I've been looking at um video reviews. These guys are at least Voyager scale. 
Ah, oh, okay. Well, like maybe a little, and... maybe a little bigger. Like I was I... expecting them to be much smaller than that. I guess that justifies the price that they're coming at mm. more so that because I thought they were just like uh, one to one forty four scale Gundam size, which is about deluxe size, maybe a bit no. smaller. These guys are, have some chunk to them. Oh, that's good. Um, but yeah, like I see if I got this, I'd also get it like I'd pull a set and buy a desk with a laptop <laughs> and an inaccurately large dog. Yes, yes. Well, you could do. You could get one of those stupid, like, uh, plastic ones that you find in random toy stores in the, mm. oh, here's some farm animals I can buy. Yeah, and then you get, like, um the uh, TFC exclusive version of Marissa they did. Oh, yeah. And then, but then you have to get him little glasses as well. So it just looks <laughs> like he's this put-upon writer whose wife keeps barging in. You could probably finagle them out of like a paper clip or something. Yeah, but this is this is just like he's not coming with the right accessories. Um, I would like seriously, I'd have lost null cannons and and put in a Marissa and a and a Buster because <laughs> I am that loser. But um, I just like there is a lot of things you could do with this. Mm. Um, and also like I've seen reviews of this one. There's some interesting bits of engineering on this guy, like a few sliding panels and stuff you wouldn't normally expect from a model kit. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't because the Gundam kits are pretty like for the scale that you're getting up to here. The mm. Gundam kits do quite a lot. Yeah, but the Gundam kits also cost quite a bit more. Um, at I, this I scale, I know I've gone looking for them. Okay. Um, and like you like oh, I don't like buying model kits. I like I'm actually getting into model kits, but buying model kits is painful. It can be. That's why you got to wait for a sale on uh, HLJ. Hmm. When you when that happens, that's when you get your your hand all the way inside and you pull it out. One lucky thing is, there's just very few Gundams I'd ever consider consider buying that aren't a large bear. That's right. You need a bear good guy. <laughs> I want the bear. I want no. I want Daddy good guy. Oh, uh, okay. That's fair enough. Or Papa good guy, whatever he was called. I wish he was a more flamboyant color than just gray. But he's got and a mustache and a top hat and a top hat and a monocle. I think. Uh, yes, and I I think he has a stick. Oh yeah, he definitely has a stick. I just wish, like I say, I wish he wasn't just boring drab grey. Yeah. I would have bought more uh, bagger guys if they were more colourful and flamboyant, like the sun. Mm. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, the start, uh, the Thundercracker, I should say. Uh, it's not long till it comes out. It's coming out apparently in May, uh, and it's going to be about thirty six dollars. I think it's fair to say that uh, Skywarp is going to be coming out I soon. I don't know if surprised. it'll be the next release. I don't what know if, they if did it'll like, be six. Uh, we're doing Bitstream, guys. Sunstorm. Uh, the dude. other, the 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 other one that, uh, God, which was the Red uh, Wing. Red Wing, that's the one. Thank you. It was that exact <laughs> one I was thinking of. I was like, who's the shit one? The um, Nacelle. Uh, no, no, it was it was Nacelle. <laughs> yes, Nacelle, the shitty mm. one that. Uh, oh, what was the company called? Oh, um, fans toys. Um, Fun Pub. Yeah, it was Fun yeah. Pub. They were the last one, and it was like the very last version of that classic Star Scream. And, and it was you were just like, you're doing another one. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Uh, so like Mikey says, doesn't look like he's coming with anything new. Uh, it is just a scar- uh, the Star Scream, just blue and white, mm. or grey, I suppose. Uh, so if you like the Star Scream and you want all three, get this one. Or if you want to be like oh. Mikey and be weird, just get one. I'm, I'm just sorry, I was, I was going to say something, but I've just realized there's a bear... I'm just looking. Bear, bear Guy F. Which one's that? Bear Guy F. Is Mama Guy, yes. Gagai, who comes with a small baby Gagai. Oh yeah, that she yeah. that she is. They have their hands locked together. Yes, because F's for family, isn't it? If I remember. Yeah. yeah, and they've they've got them in action poses, which looks like she's swinging her child around like a mace. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these are the greatest toys ever made. The good ones are fun. The fun. Uh, Mikey, do you want to take us on to the next bit of news? Yes. Um. So we've got some updates on a new masterpiece repaint, or the MP Plus line, which of course is taking older molds and updating them in ac- accurate uh, color schemes and accessories to kind of bring a few of the designs up to the same standard as the current, or at least to blend in a bit better with the current uh, trend of masterpiece going cartoon. Uh, this one is MP18 Plus Masterpiece Blue Streak. So this is the Blue Streak mold with the cartoon-inspired deco. Uh, more matte, matte paint job. He's got multiple faces, and he also comes with effect parts to plug into his gun or shoulder cannons uh, based uh, directly on energy fire shots from the show. So he's going to be a limited release um, on the Takara Direct Sales website. Uh, many sponsors, of course, are going to get them, so, you know... 
if you do get him that way, be prepared to pay the extra, shall we say. Hmm. Um, the price he's going to go for on the Takara website is going to be 9,180 yen, so about $83. Um, I'd say add between 5 and 15% onto that for when you're buying from US shops. Minimum. Um, but yeah, he's actually... So I'm not as crazy into the whole Datsun mold that other people seem to be. Oh, they love it. <laughs> the it's, it's hot really, shit. The feet really throw me off. Why don't you like the feet? They're just huge. Why is that bad? Why, what, what do you get against feet, Mikey? Because it looks less like he's walking on them and more like he's like wearing a permanent Segway. <laughs> and it's just like, wee. <laughs> Um, also like Blue Streak, uh, Blue Streak, Blue Streak's one of those characters who they really someday should do something with his bio, that he's a blabbermouth because he's got deep-seated PTSD. Hmm. Um, but the extra faces are Happy Blue Streak and Screaming Blue Streak. Ah! Yeah, and you get one, two, three effects parts that come in a ba- with, like, swappable bases, and you've got a short blast, a sort of wavy blast, and a longer wavy blast <laughs> um, yeah i don't know how to describe it either to be fair yeah they show him in scale next to the current mp bumblebee um i think he looks decent i like i do kind of, something i never realized actually um was how different blue streak's head design is from prowls i was gonna say um, like how different is it is it the same or is it is no it no different? like the there's a big difference like based on and this is one of the things where I say McFeely, check out McFeely's Art of Transformers things where he goes through the history of the design process for the early character models, mm. which is stuff I never knew anything about. Nerd. Nerd. So there was some cool stuff in there. Um, and like Prowl has the classic crest, but you notice like with um, Blue Streak, it's like more like a pair of horns sweeping out the side of his head. Right. Um, there's actually like a physical base to them. Um, and like apparently like the whole head's just redesigned enough he's basically closer to the toy are I the faces the, the same then i don't know about that on the toy here okay. i cannot remember anything about the mp plus uh prowl no nor could i <laughs> to be honest um but no i think um he looks decent it's you know it's just blue streak and you know does, does anyone really care have they done smoke screen yet he's he's got a masterpiece but he hasn't got an mp plus right so it i, I think it's Safe to assume at some point we might get one. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, maybe, maybe not rushed out anytime soon, but maybe in the back burners. Mm, like, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, what's your thoughts on old Blue? Bluey? Uh, he ain't blue. Hot Never take. <laughs> Hot take. Uh, yeah, he's fine. Uh, he was voiced by Shaggy, so I'm sure there okay. are memes plenty for him. Okay. Why is that a thing? Why is anything on the internet a thing, Mikey? The last three weeks I have been assaulted by Shaggy is only using 10% of his power. What? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, it was a real big thing. That's going to date this year, isn't it? That's going to be like yeah, 2019, the year of Ultra Instinct Shaggy. Oh, no, it won't be the year of it because it'll, it'll, it'll just be, it'll be the way. It'll be like people will, will do it for do a while and the then way. it'll be forgotten. Shaggy versus the way. The way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Blue Streak, sure, he, he's another one. He's got some good-looking faces. I like the fact that he comes with some effect parts, because that's always good. Mm. Uh, even though the effects parts, mm, they're just okay. I think that they don't wow me or anything. They're just like, yeah, okay, mm. that's fine. It's nice that they're at the very least, but I, I can't get excited because it's Blue Streak. But I, yeah. I guess I was never going to be, because at the end of the day, these pluses are just kind of rejigs. Of the, the, the already existing toys for the most part, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, these ones are. Yeah. I want you as well, Mikey, to take us on to the other Masterpiece news. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, I they're all connected. Yeah, why not? Yeah, so Wonderfest is going on, and I kind of assumed that the Winter Wonderfest would go by, and I'd be waiting for the, the summary of Kamen Rider, Figma, and everything else. We're getting Rika, just, you know. They've yeah, shown I so. the prototype of Rika. It was um, creepy how they'd already printed the eyes on her. Yes. More importantly, we're getting a Figma fucking Mako. Is is it real? Because we weren't sure last <laughs> night when we saw it. I I check it's real. Okay, that's good. She is real. She is coming. Hallelujah. We're all, we're all is doomed. She, is she coming with Boncho accessories? Oh my god! I really hope she does. Although Do I you, feel like that would be a completely different Figma. Were you were you still in the chat when uh, we were talking about it? 
Uh, no, I went to bed. Oh, I made the suggestion that one of the accessories, if it's not Bancho Mako, is that she needs to come with two hands uh, connected by a rainbow. Yes. For that pose. Or, or like, I'd, I'd accept the cutout of Bancho at the fillet until we got the full Bancho. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, but yeah, so Figma, well done. And like, I, I there's some Kamen Rider stuff there, but I haven't gone looking yet. But we, um... we need a face as well with a detent in it where a baseball's, uh, sorry, a tennis ball's hit it. <laughs> yes. Uh, the problem is you need like every version of Mako, really, don't you? Yeah. Well, there's so many faces you yeah. can give her. Um, oh, what well, if you did like here's like, every Hallelujah variant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be um, amazing. But, uh, did you see the Hellboy they did? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Thousand Toys Hellboy. Oh, I, very good. Here's here's the thing. I don't care that much about Hellboy. I I like him, but I don't care a lot. But that looks very good. That just looked like a really well done toy. See, the thing I was more interested in was they're doing a Lady Maria from Bloodborne, and mm-hmm. it seems like an accessory weapons pack, which is oh, cool. really unusual, because they don't usually do accessory packs for Figma, as far mm-hmm. as I know. But Lady Maria, like, big, important character in the game. And it looks like she comes with a chair as well, which is neat. Yes. Um, but let's stay let's, let's on, vaguely on topic. Um, okay. It turned out they had a bunch of Transformers news. Oh. A bunch. Um... And they had two a, pieces of masterpiece news. Um, a bunch of a bunch of news. A of news. Uh, um, first yeah. up, we have the full reveal of Masterpiece 2.0 Bumblebee. So this is a brand new mold of Bumblebee, which is made to be a lot more cartoon accurate. Oh, it's completely new. It's not like rejigged. Nope, brand new. Oh wow! Okay. Like um, he's like I like the feet are completely different. I assumed he was the same basic transformation, just reshelled or something. Nope, looks like a brand new mold. No, no. Um, cool. He things like the most notable things because the first mold is pretty generalized Bumblebee. Sure. And this one yeah. is like the head sculpt is that kind of really tubby one that um he has uh, in the actual show model rather so, than more streamlined sometimes. One. Yeah, like that's the thing. I'm going by the trend they've already had. He'll probably come with extra heads to represent the time he was drawn from the left badly. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, he'll come with a gun accessory. He's going to come with Spike. Um, they don't give a further accessory list with this guy, but, um, we do see a painted prototype. Um, I am curious about this guy, how the transformation works and everything else, because those feet look weird. Hmm. Those Good weird or like bad weird? Interesting weird, although okay. it does mean that basically the back of the, f- there's a lot of foot kibble. <laughs> like, he's pretty, pretty streamlined for the most part, and then you hit his feet, and it's just like, oh my god. He, he's got a lot of base, though, to balance on, I suppose. He does. He is not... If he falls over, it's your fault. Yeah. Um. So, what, what do you think of him, Andy? Uh, I would say that, like you, uh, the feet are a little bit messy, at least from the side and back. If you're looking them straight on, it's fine. Mm. Uh, but when you get to the side as well, I think the side of the torso and the back is, unfortunately, a little bit messy. It's impressive how everything kind of compacts together, clearly, uh, mm. But it just looks like a horrible mess. Like, if I saw, like, a little human arm poking out from the side, I wouldn't be shocked. Mm. Um, I'm not too fond of the face. I've seen, it, It's like one of those faces where people have photoshopped it and put the mouth and the o- ni- uh, nose and the eyes, and they've shrunk it and just kind of lifted it further up the face than it should be. It's one of those things where this was never meant to be seen in three dimensions. It, well, I've seen some people put images of a kind of badly done face, which looks more like this, uh, like a bad animation take. And then the face Bumblebee had in the movie. Uh, and he had a, I think it's because the chin part isn't nearly as pronounced. And I think when you pronounce that chin as much as they have in the sculpt, it kind of shunts everything upwards in the face, uh, which makes it look a bit on the weird side. I yeah. think it's a, it's a decent attempt, but it's there's something just off about it for me. Um, I, I like the fake chest because there's no bloody way that you could replicate that with okay, so, human physics. So, because so, I, I stop, see, I, stop, I jumped stop, on Andy, this stop, because no, I knew you were going to talk stop, about stop, it. Stop, stop, Andy. People need to stop. <laughs> um, because I have, I, after about 20 people going on about this yesterday, I may have done a little bit of a bitchy post up on the all moon based you Twitter. You? I mm. can't believe that. I also that started nagging people you. about stuff I don't know a lot about, but using basic science could ju- justify, and then they deleted all their tweets and blocked me. So, Yay. Like, that was more about me trying to think some stuff out than anything else, but it was fun. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people were complaining about the fact this guy had a fake chest. Um, the same people were complaining about uh, MP44 having a fake chest. Which one was that? Uh, Optimus. Okay. You know, Optimus. Um, and we're like, why are you bothering to do this if it's not properly transforming? It is. Because you want it to look like the animation model. Yeah. And that's that 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 car roof cannot physically turn into that robot chest. And look the way you all want it to look. It's not possible on any kind of budget you would want to pay for the story. I'm not even sure it's possible full stop. If you want the animation model, and that's what everyone seems to want at the moment, he's going to have a fake chest. He's going to have the plastic surgery. It's He's going to be wearing the Wonder Bra. You're going to, there is going to be an element of fibbery going on here. <laughs> Um, I just don't know why, why it's a weird thing to get worked up for, in my opinion, mm-hmm. because it just seems like two seconds of thought justifies it. Yeah. If you're going for a certain aesthetic, you have to do what you have to do to get that aesthetic. And every single TV transformation has been a cheat. Every single one in every single series. The only thing I want from a TV transformation or something like that mm. is the main elements from it. Uh, I mm. want to, like... You, for for let's say Hot Rod or Rodimus, I don't want every single version of his transformation, but I want his most iconic one. Yeah, and then you have the main frames of animation for that, and then you do whatever you have to do for the rest of it. As long as it gets that general feeling across as you as you do it, you're like, oh, this is the part in the show. That's that's all I'm looking for mm. for for me personally. But I guess some people want it dead on one hundred percent, which is just like you say. It, it it can't be done. <laughs> no. It can't be done. The closest you get is, like, you get the transformation right, but then the toy looks off because physics, it just yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. The mass has to go somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Any any further thoughts on Bumblebee? Um, I think it's, uh, it's neat. I think I prefer this over the original version, to be honest. Uh, because I, I am, I, I am a uh, cartoon accurate whore, so I I do like it more than the original version, but I'm not crazy about the face. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah, I would agree there. I like so the general aesthetic, but yeah. just replace the face and like not even the head, just yeah. literally the face. Change yeah. that bit, which might look better because I, I think it's safe to assume he's going to have a few different expressions. Wouldn't be shocked. So maybe one of those expressions will just have a better overall look, and mm, you just mm. look at this standard face and you go. Okay, this is one shit face. Like, uh, we've had some shit faces for some of the other characters back in the past, which you just never use because they never turned out right. So you put that in the box and never use it again. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, it's good. I think uh, our lovely Diamooch is uh, very giddy with excitement for this. I would not be surprised. Shocking. But it's like, he, <laughs> here's another masterpiece for Josh to pe- uh, pick up. Yep. Another Bumblebee. Uh, the other bit of masterpiece news, to say this came out of left field, I... F- See, we were all expecting more Beast Wars Masterpiece, really. Mm. I was expecting them to do Rhinox and Rat Trap next. Yeah, finish off the Autobots, uh, the, Autobot, the Maximals. Yeah. I was thinking, like, maybe they'll take some risks and do someone difficult. Maybe Air Razor would be, like, she'd be a challenge. Like, I wasn't thinking them to follow up on Dinobot and Megatron by going, like, by the way, here's the hardest Transformer we probably have to do from this line, from yeah. this season one. Um, we have a full physical prototype with evidence of at least one accessory of Masterpiece Black Arachnia. Mm-hmm. Um, she is played in a robot mode. The She's coming with a web, a big web that she can be attached on. She looks like she'll have a stand. Um, she is show accurate to the... And th- th- this is literally me just saying, like, this was in the show model. So I'm going to point it out. She is show accurate to the inclusion of her six-pack and nipples. Because Black Arachnia in the show has vaguely pointy nipples. Mm-hmm. Not something I'm I'm pointing out because I'm that guy. I'm pointing out because like this guy, this thing is down to a fucking T. Um, and she had like she might have some wit to her, but she does not pack a lot of kibble. Um, she's even got the nine eyes in sp- in, in the spider head bits that were in the show model and aren't on real spiders. <laughs> Uh, which have eight eyes, if they have that number of eyes. They don't have an even number of eyes. They don't just have an extra eye beneath everything else. Um, what about do, if they do, but they had one of them poked out? Uh, or they're just constantly holding a, a leg over it? Yeah. 
<laughs> they they get a, a little spider eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> like it'll be like one of those little cute pictures of spiders that's like oh i'm here to empty your house of dangerous insects is that a paper <laughs> um well i guess i'd love to see what's in the news today <laughs> but yet how do i put this delicately this thing looks fucking awesome in my opinion um this looks like a challenge and i can't even begin to conceive how most of this transformation works um but i can tell you the legs look fully articulated the arms look great. The spider legs look like you can actually do stuff with them. Uh, the head sculpt is great. The body sculpt looks on point. Um, I'm sure the spider mode has quite a few compromises, as all these guys do. But that doesn't bother me, because, again, physics. Uh, Andy, what's your thoughts on... I, I, I should point out also, like, she would look a lot better colored up. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I saw someone complain, like, oh, she looks so bland. It's just like, maybe it's because she <laughs> doesn't have any of her colors. <laughs> the fuck of what? <laughs> She's just so boring to the eye. And just like, yeah, yeah, she would be. Oh, man, imagine if we had to pay for the color on her. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> what, so what's your thoughts? You know, Mikey, mm. you know what I hate? I hate the over-sexualization of my Transformers. I think it's a shame that we've got to over-sexualize Transformers. It's uh, such a problem these days, isn't it? I'm going to say something I never thought I'd have to say. How do you over-sexualize Beast Wars Black Arachnia? That's the joke. I know. That's the joke. But I know there's someone out there who's really saying it. Yeah, yeah. She's literally based on a big boob stritter. Yeah. It, that's, it did. that's true. It does make it does make me raise an eyebrow slightly uh, because I don't see the, the I'm sure there is to some people but to me I don't see the difference between this and some of the toys that have been banned. There is a difference between this and the RC figure with the boob accessory thing. Yes, there, there is, is a m- difference between the, malleable nipples with I, multiple I, G cups. I only or cup say, sizes. I only say this because if anyone brought that up, I'd be like, "Are you joking? That's I obviously a different." View of that during the week. How did that make you feel about yourself? I didn't realize that the I knew there were different breast styles. I didn't realize that they literally came in very specific cup sizes. <laughs> Jesus. It was the guy was like really serious. Mm-hmm. He was Chinese. I couldn't understand a word he was saying, but he was serious. Yeah. And he was like demonstrating the malleability of the chest the, with the chest before the boobs come out. And I was like, <laughs> and you just tell by the tone of voice, it's just like, this guy is like, fu-. he spent like 10 minutes flicking her nipples and talking about the detail there. And uh, like, you could tell he was talking about detail because he was like pointing something. Like, ah, ah, ah. I was just like, I don't know what I'm watching, but I, I, I then eBayed it. And these things not only are selling for stupid amounts of money, I am not paying 40 euros for Whoa. an extra chest set, um, but they're selling out. Wow, all right. There's like only, there's a lot of people, I saw several, like only one left, 20 sold. Wow. Jason. So there you, is you... certainly a market for it. Yep. Like we did say there was, yeah. but it's, it's, I suppose it's knowing and realizing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Wow. Oh, well. But, yeah. But putting away the fact that the fandom has a certain hypocr- hypocrisy towards Black Arachnia from Beast Wars versus RC and Windblade from today. Yes. Which, let's be fair, there is a small bit of that there. There um, is. What do you think of the actual figure? It's surprising how magic has seemingly <laughs> happened. Like, I don't understand how this is meant to work. And Dinobot's just in the back saying, like, <laughs> you all thought I was weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm fascinated to see how this works as a figure, and I know she didn't have a big spider body, and I'm guessing that's the thing that's helping her out the mm. most. I don't know her her spider mode was quite chunky, especially her, like it no, was her, bigger her than her ass was. Black. Yeah, but like that's the thing. Where the most of her was ass. Yeah. So where the hell is it? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really hard to figure out where everything's been put. I have to assume like the ass unfolds from the legs somehow. I, I guess I can see some hinges, but who knows? Yeah, maybe she just like explodes like a piece <laughs> of paper, and then it just kind of origami's back to a normal yeah. shape. Yeah, like, the the modern Beast Wars stuff is really putting like Chewbacca and Optimus to a little bit of shame. I, I suppose that's always going to happen because those guys, uh, especially um, Optimus, came out a while ago, and mm. they just went with I hate to say it, but they went with the laziest option for Optimus. Yeah. Um, which neither of us were surprised at at the time, and I'm not really surprised at it now, but it's it's one of those things. 
Mm. Uh, I really like her accessory of having the spider venom web thing, even though that was, I think that was a bit more of a tarantulas thing, to be honest. Like, I associate yeah. that more with tarantulas than her. Yeah. Although, like, oh, no, you couldn't. Like, you could maybe retool her into tarantulas, but... Ooh, could you? Yeah. His robot mode proportions are very different. Yeah. He's way broader. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, maybe the legs and maybe the arms, but the torso just wouldn't work, and you'd need to obviously re-sculpt the, the legs, but that wouldn't mm. be too hard. No, that, I'm, I'm not sure. Me- <sighs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's it's impressive. We didn't see her with a gun, though, so that's one accessory we haven't seen her with yet, but you know, she, I think that's yeah. a guarantee. Yeah. Um, that head doesn't work in grayscale, um, but I hope it obviously pans out a little bit better once it's all colored up. But even then, it was it was always a strange looking head design. Yeah, um, she's got a weird face. God bless her. Yeah, she always did because she because it always looked like she had a mask around her mouth. Mm. Like her mouth was the only kind of liquidy metal bit that was moving, and then it was a mask around that, and then the mask around the the actual head itself. Yeah, I, and like that worked in animated because yes. of how they played it. But, you know, she the colors and everything else on the actual... Like, the model, it didn't work as well in Beast Wars. No, exactly. Yeah. Mm. It, but hell, damn, that's a hell of a good job they've done on it. Um, very, mm. I'm looking, like I say, looking forward to seeing what it's like when it comes out and painted. Mm. Uh, because all like even if uh, Optimus Primal wasn't that interesting of a figure and maybe a little bit lazy in some ways... Uh, no one can deny that this line hasn't been painted very, very well. Yeah, and it's getting better with the paint as well. That's a thing. Yeah. Like, um, I think they'll have a lot easier job with her than, say, Megatron. I think Megatron and Dinobot was a pain in the ass for them. <laughs> to be honest, just because of all the scales and stuff they had to do. Oh, with Black Arachnia, uh, from what I recall, it's just kind of a textured black body yeah. with, like, uh, Gold. orangey-ish, goldy, bronzy legs, and then, yeah. like, a, a red ass. And, and Yeah, and some red here and there. Yeah, and that's it. So it's not no, nearly she, as trying. She doesn't have, like, rows of stripes. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Woof. But no, uh, very impressive. Uh, uh, I guess this means the table's open a bit more. Maybe mm. it makes sense for them to do her as well, in a sense, because she became a maximal. It's yeah. a bit more of a stretch, but maybe that's the reason why they did her. No, like, I'm really hoping someone at Takara is going, like, let's just do the whole season one cast. I hope so, yeah. I really and hope, because how the fuck are they going to do Pterosaur and Eraser? <laughs> I think, uh, ooh, I Black don't know. Magic. Maybe, I, Black... I imagine Black Arachnia would have been harder than Air Razor, because Air Razor's like... got a bit more back kibble to kind of work with. Kind of, but also, like, her her hawk head is supposed to, like, that. where that fake uh, hawk chest I'll... is going to come from. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because that, that's not going to be real. Pterosaur disappears and a robot appears in his place. Yeah, I'm pretty like, sure that's even shown in the show. <laughs> yeah, Pterosaur basically shoves the Pteranodon off screen and then goes like, It was me all along! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Andy, this doesn't mean there's a fair, there is a fair chance we're getting a masterpiece Waspinator. One would hope, because didn't that uh, that Waspinator toy that came out suffer like plastic degradation oh, or something? Massively, massively. Which is so... weird. It almost had its own um, gold plastic syndrome going on, it seemed. So it would I'll... be it would be nice to see him. I think they are definitely going down the list of mm. probably most important to sellers kind of characters for the most part. Yeah, yeah. So I, like, I, I like I don't yeah. see Scorponok or Pterosaur being done anytime oh, soon. There's no priority. I don't see Tigertron being ti- done soon, and I don't see Air Razor being done soon compared to the the other ones that are left. Like, like Tarantulas yeah, like... is like if I was to yeah. hedge a bet, I'd mm. say Rhinox, Rat Trap, or maybe Tarantulas would be up next. For season yeah. one, guys. Yeah, and then after them, Inferno. Ooh, mm, yes, I, I would. I would hope Tarantulas would come before Inferno. Myself. Yeah, because like, lo- I love Inferno. We all yes. do. But of the like lovable ones, he is the lowest ranked. Yeah, but I think his his design is better than Tarantulas's. Oh because yeah, because he, like, season two great. Tarantulas is better. Obviously, yeah. Transmetal one. That's the one you want. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. With, yeah, when's it, that? <laughs> when's that yeah. coming? <laughs> <laughs> when we get a roller skate T Rex? Oh man, it'll happen sometime. Yeah, very impressed. Looking mm. forward to. Looking forward to seeing her different expressions as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She should come with it. That well, like she she needs a smirk and a few others. But like, what if she comes with like a, a head with green eyes to represent when Tarantulas pre- uh, possessed her in season two? That'd be neat. Yeah, with coding on her eyes. Yeah, yeah. that'd be really cool. Yeah. I'd like to see that. She, she might come with uh, the visor as well. She used to hack into people. Mm, mm. Yeah. That'd be cool. 
Yeah, she um, could come with some really interesting ex- accessories. Maybe she comes with a kissy face for uh, here, you know, a boyfriend. <laughs> Plus, you can do, like, a completely grey repaint of her to represent the time she got a magic chair and took over an island. Oh, yeah. Oh. That yeah, that was a really good stuff. repaint as well of her, actually. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, she was her versus the hippie in the form of Psychotron. <laughs> but, <laughs> and the so. hippie won somehow. <laughs> you love not war, man. All and right. by love, I mean ordinance. <laughs> by love, I mean war. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, what else was shown then? Uh, was there any other masterpieces or? Uh, no more masterpieces, but there was plenty else there. All right. Well, I'll I'll uh, I'll do the next little one, which is uh, more in the veins of uh, uh, not Power of the Prime. So it what is it? Siege. As a few mm. siege things were shown off. Some uh, one new thing at least, and then one really heavily redone thing. Yeah. Uh, they showed off a Star Convoy and an Armada Prime cab mode. Yeah. At least, yeah. Didn't see is... either of these guys coming. No, uh, Star Convoy uh, is a heavily retooled version of uh, Power of the Primes, Optimus Prime. Mm-hmm. Again, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's really bizarre. Uh, yeah. and it works. Though. It does. Bizarre. Surprisingly, it does. And we're, we're not going to talk about Are Jetfire before. Oh, what for? Um, for Star Pro- Convoy. Yeah, I don't remember that mold well enough. They might be the same front of the feet, but the back look different, and obviously the uh, the shins are different. Yeah, uh, the thighs are the same. The w- the, the waist, waist is different, is it? Yeah, because okay. that's way more angled. The, the torso is all different. Torso the the it looks like at least the windows are the same for the core robot. Yeah, I don't know if it still just turns into a Ryan Pax. I new hope arm not. Oh, that would be weird. New arm pieces, new shoulder pieces, brand new head. And uh, there's a foldy sli- bit. Slightly new shoulder pieces. It seems like they're the basic shoulder pads, but they've stuck the guns on the top of them. Mm. For whatever reason. Just to give it that uh, that Star yeah. Convoy look. Uh, and like you say, a super Japanese head. Yep. I-, I guess the question is, uh, are you excited for this? I want to see him painted. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'll look great. I think that mold, um, all its repaints have been way better than the original. Mm, yes. So, like, I still would like to pick up Nemesis at some point. Oh, yes. Um, I think this guy looks good. I really, like I said, I really want to see him done up. I really want to see the core robot. Um, he is not the one I'm excited about, though. No, no, I, w- I would agree. Uh, but for my take on Star Convoy, I was more surprised at the fact that this is, I, I assume, I don't think there's anything to confirm that it's not a Western release. Like um, this to me seems more like a, uh, a any hobby exclusive. He's an LG. He's a Legends LG EX. Oh, so he is an exclusive for Japan. Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot more sense. That makes a lot, lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see this guy getting a, a Western released, and the amount of remolding that's happening to it made me think again of uh, say Dialis and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's fine. Means he'll come with a badass comic from Sakamoto, and that's all I really care about at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, Armada Prime, who would have thunk it? Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Didn't see any of this coming. No, we only see him in robot mode, uh, but we do see he has a big split in his groin, and we have seen some pictures from behind him of the back of his shins, which have hands, so yep. it seems to heavily imply that he's going to be able to Super Jinrai, or whatever Super Mode Prime had in uh, What Armada. is it? Super Link? No, the Power Links. Yeah, sure. Whatever. I can't remember what they called it in Japan. It's just oh, super mode God. or something. Got tight. It? Yeah. Probably just got tight. So is this guy coming out in the in the West or is he just a Japanese exclusive? No one knows. Okay. Because this is a brand new mold. Clearly. Yeah, that's There's the... nothing old on this. Yeah, this is brand, like, brand, brand new. Um, And, like, it's not actually, like, I was checking it out. It's not a one-to-one match for any other version of Amrata Prime. It's mm. quite stylized in places. Like oh, the, right. gr- okay. the grill, for instance, all those wavy lines and everything else. Yeah. There's no other version of this character that has that. Mm, They're all okay. completely straight. The proportions are also quite different. Right. Um. So someone, like, had some fun with this. Um. But, you know, uh, hey, look, Andy, it's a character. It's a character design that previously existed, but someone decided to put a fresh take in it. That's nice. I like that. Mm. It's kind of also, what I'd like more of. We this can This can have two other repaints as well. Oh yes, the Power Links version, which was the blue with a red faceplate thing, and the obviously the Nemesis version. Yeah. So, and I like both of those more for that color scheme for this toy. So definitely, definitely. Yeah. 
Um, Would you like, be surprised if this was only a Japanese release? Not really. <laughs> no, me neither. No, but like this guy's going to be huge. I would also say it would be a bit weird to have so many primes in the siege line since we already have an Optimus Prime figure already. I I think it would, like the only way I could see this in the siege line if it's a commander class. Uh, yeah, maybe with, with the combination gimmick in there. I can't see it any other way. And I don't think they do it to be honest. No, they, I, I mean they might. It would be, be very weird though. to have. Okay, so we'd have the Voyager Optimus. We'd have. The Cybertron Optimus, and then we'd have an Armada Optimus. Yeah, like that would it be would weird. make sense in a way because you know it's this is the time at least to to kind of cash in on the Unicron trilogy stuff. And then someone One says, "Can we do Energon Optimus?" And no, they get shoved into a boost. No, they get thrown out the window. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd love that you'd got a jet fire to go with him. <laughs> yeah, those fancy pants. Hmm. Them fancy pants. Uh, it's a real solid looking figure. Uh, yeah, kind of excellent. And I'll, I'll, I'll honestly, like, yeah. really, really good. I had a lot of people asking on um, Twitter if these were third party, and it was just like, because the because the Armada Optimus looks so not what anyone was expecting. That's that's the thing. Mm. Uh, Star Convoy one hundred percent looks like a Hasbro toy mm. with the with Takara influence remolding. Uh, but I would agree. I, w- I was surprised that the Armada Prime was a Hasbro figure or a Takara figure or however it's coming out. It seems yep. uh, good, but weird, strange. I ain't complaining. No, I-, I look forward to seeing more and getting more information on this as it comes out like and finding out what the fuck it means. You know, how does this affect us in the future, I suppose? Oh, yeah. Uh, Mikey, do you want to take uh, the last little bit of news that we got from the Wonderfest? Yeah, this is, again, one I wasn't expecting. Uh, Amazing Ram- Yamaguchi uh, revealed the next figure in their Amazing Yamaguchi line, which, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Revel Tech evolved oh, God. into this. Um, I-, I was going to ask if it was Revel Tech. <laughs> it, yeah, but, like, it evolved where they went with a lot crazier posability. Like a lot crazier posability, mm. and frequently sculpts are designed more for their insane poses than their static uh, appearances. I do like that so, groin thrust, especially on those Marvel figures. Oh yeah, but like if you've seen that um, Spider Woman going around the Spider Gwen. Oh no, I haven't I? Oh no, I have. Yes. Yeah, Sorry, when you got... said Spider Woman, I I thought Spider Woman woman. Yeah, but and there's also Spider Man. Their per- their proportions are nuts, but they're mm. s- designed very very specifically for poses and very crazy poses. And very, like, they basically said, we're going to sacrifice a lot of aesthetic for this at times, but it means that from the right angles and stuff and in the right poses, these things look quite dynamic. Um, and here they've got the base figure, and there's a, a picture actually revealed of him later on that shows he's going to come with at least three or four hands. Um, but then we've got him in sort of a two really actiony poses, one where he looks like he's coming off the ground about to shoot some fools, and the other where he's just kind of diving, like... Swan diving into something, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> with an axe accessory. Um, so, from what I understand, the Amazing Yamaguchi line is a lot of an... It's a pretty big improvement over classic Rebel Tech. Oh god, I would hope so. Um, for one thing, they don't use Rebel Tech joints on everything. Uh, they still use quite a few, but um, apparently there's also been a big... Like, there's a lot less of that fighting and awkward posing and everything else. Hmm. Um, so, and I will say the base sculpt of this guy looks kind of nuts. Uh, like surprisingly well done in terms of the sculpt. Um, yeah, I I gotta say I'm curious about this guy. He's got some things I don't like, like how his shoulder um works for like raising the arm. Yeah, because seems instead, like it'll leave a big gap, doesn't it? Yeah, but instead of what it does, it does there's a, a shoulder joint that pulls out and then lifts up. So you've got that thing where the arm is kind of floating and it's like sh- the box part of his shoulder is on his chest. Like, whereas I would have preferred there was a cut, a cut or a flap or something in the shoulder that you could just raise it without artificially lifting up the joint. Mm. Um, but God, I think it turned out quite well. In all seriousness, I'm yeah, I want to see reviews. I want to see more colored samples. I want to see the full accessory loadout. But I mean, they've got pictures of him next to the old Dreamwave one, and yeah, no, <laughs> 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 I had that toy. I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, hey, more non-transforming Transformers is always a good thing in my book. Uh, I am cautious because, again, Revel Tech and we, we have both had bad experiences. We have. Um, so what's your thoughts, Andy? Eh. 
<laughs> where's it? Where's it post uh, posted next to the Dreamwave one? I don't see one posted. Uh, uh, it's standing next down. to the Dreamwave one. Scroll down. It's just a picture where they just show the the difference in the molding. All oh, right. Okay. So you meant like in the case or something? Oh no, yeah. No. There, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's certainly better. There's no doubt mm. about it. He looks better. I just, it's a, it's an Optimus Prime, and I, th- I again that is my problem. It's like here's another Optimus Prime figure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's who you're going to do. There's no doubt that's who you're going to do, but my excitement Unless levels for an toys. Optimus Prime... Well, I mean, Flame Toys did an Optimus Prime. Yeah, but they did an Optimus Prime after they'd already in it revealed two other figures. That's the thing. Uh, <laughs> they've just revealed a Optimus Prime, mm. uh, and after all this time, I can't uh, get excited for Optimus Primes, especially G1 Optimus Primes, mm. which is kind of sad. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, this will do it for a lot of people. I, I do really like how he can pose... You, they've got the pose of him in the case, like, kneeling down, but with his arms kind of cross over, double-holding the gun. Mm. Like, that's a really good pose. That's a really interesting pose. Um, look forward to seeing what it can do. Uh, int- I mean, probably going to get Megatron again, right? I would not be shocked. Yeah, as probably long as the next two... Sound Soundwave. As lo- well, I was going to say, as long as it's not Starscream and Hot Rod, which is what they did last time. Oh, no, it's like... no Hot Rod. Why did you do Hot Rod in the first place? Well, no, I, I wouldn't have mind if they did Galvatron with it, because it yeah. would have like, made a thematic sense, but they did that, him and then Starscream. It's like, well, what's the correlation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if you want to do like each of the leaders, mm. that'd be fine. That'd be all right. But, uh, yeah, all right. Sure, rock and roll. I don't know. Shall I move on, Mr. Mikey? Yes. All right. We've got a little bit of information about Cyberverse Season 2. We've got some stuff on its next release. Uh, it's going to be... It is confirmed for Q4 of this year. That's the fourth quarter, for those not mm. aware. Once again, Cartoon Network is par- partnering up with Hasbro Studios uh, to bring content to your home. However, the series will also follow its first season strategy and will be available on YouTube as well. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's likely t- that the creative talent from Boulder Media is working on the production for another great season. I don't rather think... odd if they weren't. <laughs> I would have thought so. I think it would have been more bizarre if they hadn't. Mm. Uh, but the main the main crux of this is the fourth quarter of this year. So probably September, since that's mm. kind of when the new shows generally start, is going to be when um, it kind of kicks off again. I still haven't finished the first season. Did it end on a cliffhanger kind of thing, Mikey? Uh, 50-50. It had an ending to the arc they were telling, and then it was just like, oh, y'all fuck now. Okay. But it is, like, I'll be honest, Sub- Cyberverse surprised me quite a bit. Mm-hmm. What's Especially your excitement about... level for a season two, then? I'm definitely interested. I'm not, like, flipping you, out, but I'm like, If you're gonna cool. rate your excitement on a one to ten scale? It's a six. Okay, so you're you, you, above a meh. Yeah, like, not meh, but it's like, I, this is not a show I'd ever go down as like, oh my god. Ah! But it's like, it's surprising. There is a lot more in this than you'd ever have thought going on. It has problems. The voice cast clearly is inexperienced. They might be better in season two since they might be better a, a year, basically. Like, if they had any sense, they'd rewrite Optimus completely. But <laughs> What, to make him a character and not a yeah, stone oh statue? My. And, and plea, poor guy who's playing him. Poor guy who's playing him. Who apparently became well-known in, in like originally because he did a good uh, Optimus impression on something once. Um, but it's just like, the guy clearly has range, and they're just B. Peter Cullen. <laughs> like, but... Um, are you, like, you saying they, they took a crowbar to his talent and just broke yes. its knees, and they went, no! Yes. No acting! <laughs> yeah, I would also say if there's any sense, Bumblebee will, Bumblebee will get his voice back, because the radio thing... Is lame. He made, he, 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 it's lame. It's, it's not great it, at the best of times. It's definitely not great when the, all the radio clips are done by the same voice actor. It's lame. I, yeah. I'm stating it now. It's lame. It sucks. <laughs> like, the fact that, like, at least in the movie and stuff, they use radio clips to make it, rather than, like you say, the the voice actor, which makes no sense. Yeah. Plus makes the absolutely gimmick, no sense. The gimmick of cutting to his inside brain to get memories back. I don't think that works anymore with the narrative. Right. Did it get up to a point in the story where it just can't... It would be very odd to me right now if he was constantly flashing back to different events. Okay. Like, just because of how the narrative went. Mm. Um, They could still use flashbacks, but not the way they were doing it. Right. Interesting. In my opinion, anyway. Um, but no, I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully more Megatron as well. Like I re I, I did dig that Megatron performance overall. It it occasionally went a wee bit on the ham side. <laughs> no, not um, on the fun ham though. No, I'm just just uh, the just overcooked ham. ham. 
Oh no! It, it, um, did it did they go into spam territory? Yeah, but he's not like him and Starscream Scream are barely in the series. Right, interesting. Like Shockwave has a much bigger role, and I be, think Shockwave's guy did a really good job. I'll be honest; I wasn't a big fan of Star Scream's voice. Oh no, I personally. hate it. You're not Chris Latta. Oh, but if I do the scratchy no, voice, no. am I not? No. Pitch me no. up. Eee! <laughs> you know who? You know who can do Star Scream? Tom Kenny, Steve Blum. You know what they didn't try to do? Pretend to be Chris Latta. They yeah. they took inspiration, but they did their own thing. Yeah, and that's well, what everyone should do. I mean, that's I, I guess that's what you could argue against um, Bumblebee, who's taking too many cues from the movie version, and Peter yeah. Cullen's uh, and Optimus Prime, who's taking too many cues from the movie again. Yeah. Um, he, he, season two, shatter and dropkick, but mm. actually flesh out the characters a bit more. Yep. There you go. That'd be neat to see them in. Bring them in. Oh. Bring in Lugnut. Yeah. Oh, I always bring in Lugnut. Bring yeah. Lugnut knockout in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Sure. That'd be neat. Make it the fan gather the season. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, uh, and some original characters as well, so we can mm. have uh, new guys introduced. Yeah, out yeah. On top of that. um, what's her name? Storm Shadow. Oh, Sh- Shadow Strike, wasn't it? Sh- Shadow, Shadow Strike. Yeah, she's cool. I like her. And the like the crazy movies. robot lady yeah. Decepticon. Yeah, she don't like she. She's cool, and I like her. I like her whole thing of just like she. She's just broken. I think, and mentally, and I'd I th- like to see more of her. I think we need Iron Factory to do one of their cute little uh, uh, anime um, mm. tiny legend figures for her, because we need yeah, a decent yeah. figure of her, because every version that's out officially is shit. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stating that for as a fact, because it's... They, I don't think... Does she, ha- does she have a warrior? And even if she... Do- no, actually, she it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't matter. And They're not very good anyway. No, like, her design is just not made for that... No, and Toy it's a line. shame. It's it's a good it's a good looking no. design. It's interesting. Overall, I would really like decent toys of these designs. I think most of them in show work pretty damn well. Yeah. I but I think the toys of them are crap. Yeah. I don't know how they sold with children. I mean, that's always the thing, isn't it? How how well are toys selling? We don't yeah. know. But um, like I you know I I want to see more of the seekers. I think slip having slipstream be the main seeker. I think was inspired. Yeah, it's a good like, idea. Why not? Because she, she's just so, like it puts Starscream in a in a position you very rarely see him in. Uh, intimidation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice actually. Like, He's actually um, the air commander, which he should be. Yeah, and every like Slipstream is just the top goon, but she's desperately trying to be like the top goon, the top like, top goon. I I know what I'm doing. I'm in charge. Thundercracker, do what you're told. The uh, um Acid Storm, stop changing your head. <laughs> um. But, no, I think it. I want to see more. I Like I said, I just think there's a lot of things they could do better on. Sure. I think that's fair. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, Mr. Mikey, do you want mm. to take us on to an expert of news? A weird one, actually. I yeah. didn't know where, where to put this. We probably no. should have gone into the Japanese section, I suppose. Yeah, but I did not see this coming. No, um, nor I. So, we have an announcement from the Tokyo Bookstore Village Books um, that we are getting a full crossover comic of... Transformers, uh, the title is Majinger Z versus Transformers or versus Super Robot Lifeform Transformers. Um, this is the, by the way, whoever wrote this went really into the, the overblown stuff, so I'm just going to skim. Um, it's going to be, do they have a page count? B5 sizing. What? Uh, full, full color illustrations in an American comic book art style by a team of six prolific Japanese artists. Yeah. Uh, the story will be about the forces of Cybertron, uh, the Cybertrons and Destrons being sucked into a space-time d- distortion across dimensions, then appearing in a time Japan, in, in a time Japan, where Majinger is act. Uh, that's badly written. Appearing in a time in Japan, I'm assuming, where Majinger is active, um, and then they encounter Doctor Harrell, uh, Doctor Hell, and Baron Ashura, Ooh. and uh, basically it becomes a four four way freeway. Um, and the cover art is interesting because I would put money down that the artist who did that worked on Flame Toys. Uh, yeah, I could see that. Because yeah, it looks like the, the front of the box is a bit, don't it? Not just that, that Optimus Prime head design with those very specific cuts along the grill, mm-hmm. or the faceplate rather, those those are on the, the original highly stylized Optimus design they did. I would say Kabuto doesn't... Uh... Mix Kabuto too well Koji. in that. He, he, he uh, sorry, Koji. He he sticks out. Yeah, he does look like he just sort of appeared. Yeah. Um, also, Optimus looks tiny next to Majinger, but kind of should. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah, because Prime's like what thirty foot tall or something. Yeah, Majinger is a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, question is, will RC and Windblade have breast missiles? <laughs> oh, it should. 
It, mm. If it's thematic, it should. Yep. Um, so the team of artists on the book includes uh, Yu Kinutani, um, who worked on The Apocalypse of Devil Man, uh, Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex. All right. Mm. Okay. Uh, Hayato Sakamoto, uh, More Than Meets the Eye, to character Legends Manga. Uh, Eiji Yoshi- uh, Yoshioka, uh, who is a Transformers illustrator and worked on the E Hobby comics. Mm. Um, some of them look quite good, so I'm curious about that. See the one that did the uh, big convoy. I think the blue be. one. Maybe. Hmm. Um, Kazumi Hoshi, who worked on Majin Kaiser Skull and Dino Getter. Oh, all right. Mm. Um, Skull looks cool. It was a terrible anime, but oh, it looks yeah. cool. My looked God. great. I love the design. Um, Hidetsugu Yoshioka, um, who does packaging art for Master Force, Victory Zone, E-Hobby, Henkei, etc. Uh, Naoto Tsushima, who is, of course, the Henkei Transformers packaging artist and does various Transformers IDW covers. Uh, the normal release cover will be done by the man, the myth, the legend, the porn star, Go Nagai. Woo! <laughs> He's still going. Um, so, cool. <laughs> um... I'm not just being that guy, but I'm just trying to figure out, like, what he'd do. Or go on a guy. Yeah. Everyone for dies. For Transformers covers. Yeah, actually, yeah, like, if he's... They haven't said who the writer is. Like, if he's writing it, this will not be a happy story. Oh, I imagine he might? Because, yeah, oh god, if he's writing it, Optimus is gonna, like, sprout tentacle arms at some point. Yeah. And like, But it's gonna be like, he's gonna be lying there, like, and... God and the devil will be mentioned at some point. Tentacles. Yeah. And it landed like Optimus, like he's still conscious, but he's like lying there with a half a torso and Kabuto Koji is off. Kabuto Koji. I, is it Koji or Kabuto? That's the first name because I can never remember because they obviously things get reversed in different. I think it's it's his last name is Kabuto and I think his first name is Koji, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've watched Mazinga, so. Mm. Okay, so we do have some staff actually. So the it's going to be written by... You okay, Yujin Ishikawa, Eugene in brackets. <laughs> is that trying to help us with the pronunciation, or does he literally call himself Eugene? Mine, I hope so. My badass English name's Eugene. Yeah. Um, the synopsis is going to be made by Naoto Tsushima. The cover and the artist we already covered. There's going to be galleries as well, which oh, wow. will be done by Funin. Um, I've seen their work on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, Su, uh, Suyoshi Nan- uh, Nanaka, Yuki Oshima, and Fumitaka Kuniji. This sounds um, like a big production, really. Yeah, there's going to be four different colors covers uh, by different artists. It's going to cost 19, uh, 1,980 yen, um, uh, and it's going to be out on the 28th of March, 104 pages. Wow, all right, that's not terrible. Okay, so I'm just going to ask a question. Are we getting a weird Majinger colored version of Optimus from some line? I mean, that would be really boring because he's black and red and silver and yeah. Optimus is black, uh, sorry, is red and blue and silver. So there's not much of a difference in color for the most part. So I don't see what the point would be in it. But uh, maybe. The layout know? would be very different. It would be. That is true. Mm. I don't know. I mean, uh, weirder things have happened. We would never have predicted there would have been an Evangelion Optimus Prime, so any, any, anything's possible, I'd say. Yeah, this this is definitely true. Mm. Um, also, I'm just looking at the list of crossovers on TFWiki, and they don't actually list the um, Evangelion one. Uh, no, they don't. Mm, you fucked up there, guys. It brings um, in nothing but shame, that's why. <laughs> but yeah, I'll keep an eye out for this. Hopefully we get a translation of it. Um, yeah, we'll probably cover it on From the Files, I would imagine, if we can. Hopefully, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, Andy, take it on. Sure, let me take you on to the next story, Mikey, which is Toy Reveals. We've seen things, and these things include Studio Series SS46, Dropkick, Car Mode, his car mode, where he's a car. And mm. the SS38 Voyager Bumblebee Optimus Prime figure. Is that right? Yeah, movie Bumblebee Optimus Prime. <laughs> what a f- he's, what a- he's got, it's a bizarre hybrid. <laughs> okay, it, it could happen. <laughs> yes, because we already have a dropkick where he's a helicopter, don't we? Yes, a skinny helicopter. So, uh, do you recall how good that was or how that looked to um, you? I, from what I understand, the toy feels quite small. And obviously the robot mode doesn't really look like Dropkick. Well, here's the question, Mikey. Do you think this is better representation of Dropkick? For it's you personally. 
perfect on the character model. Well, no. But he does have a scene where he is just a car. Mm-hmm. So this is in the movie, unlike the helicopter. <laughs> um, and I think it does work. The proportions are definitely way more in line with the character. Mm-hmm. It comes with his uh, bubble gun, as I'm calling it. I, I like the goo gun. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's slightly a shame that Shatter, the car Shatter doesn't look on par with this. And yeah. doesn't have the right head like this guy does. Yeah. Um, but maybe we're going to get a Jetwet version of her as well. I would, Im- um, I would imagine we would do, right? I mean, if mm. they've done... This is a second version of Dropkick. They'll, they'll have to do a second version of Shadow, one would assume. Be surprised if they didn't. But no, I think yeah. it's come together rather well, to be honest. Um, The car mode looks decent, but I can see there's going to be some severe kibble issues. Yeah, you can see some junk hanging under as well, which is a bit of a bummer. <laughs> but never mind. Um, what do you, what's your thoughts on old Dropkick? Uh, I like his car mode, but then again, I think they, they were just cool cars in the film. Mm. Uh, the the robot mode, like you, uh, gives me more of a, a drop kick impression than the helicopter did, which kind of just looked more like a bit more of a generic Decepticon kind of guy. Looked like whirl in the skies. Yeah, yeah, that would have worked. I could have, mm. I could have bought that. Uh, Optimus Prime, though, Mikey. Yes, that that is a flat nose truck. That is a terrible CAD model. <laughs> it's um, in which mode? Seen in either. I've okay. seen a review of this guy. Of this guy. Yes, um, PR put one up today. Oh, wow, okay. And? Um, honestly, he looks a lot better than this. Oh, thank God. Well, that's this, something at least. This highlight, <laughs> like, this is, like, there's some, he's got problems. Like, I don't like the leg transformation because it basically hide the fact there's nothing in the legs. But oh, they're hiding. Are, are they hollow, are they, or something? Yeah, very hollow. Right. They're, you just fold over some panels. Uh, but on the other hand, they're at least hiding it. Um, but, like, this does not, does not, really give a very good look at what the toy really looks like. I think. Does the head look better in person? Because the head yes. looks really off. Much better. Oh, and well, again, good. More in proportion as well. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like, if you want to see the toy, the review's out there, but yeah. Um, just not a very good CAD model in my opinion. So basically, you'd recommend don't look at these pictures for at least the Optimus Prime and just go and check out Pure's video for a, for a better representation, which is fair because he's got Definitely. the real thing. So yeah. He's got, a, he's got a toy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a weird CG model from a dodgy angle. Mm. I'm wondering if that'll be the same with Dropkick as well. He'll look better when you have a, a real toy as well. Or yeah. worse. It could go either way, I suppose. Uh, do you have any other, uh, any other thoughts on those two, Mikey? Or is, uh, are, are you good there? I'm good. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't seen the real Optimus Prime, and I, I, I can't really say. I don't want to say, since I haven't seen the real one. So let me tell you, Mikey, about Siege. Mm. The War for Cybertron. Uh, we've had some reveals. Uh, yes. Apparently, uh, did you say these were uh, going to be at New York Comic Con? Not these Comic-Con, are Toy ahead Fair. of New York ahead. Uh, yeah. Toy Fair. They're called anyway. So. Uh, yeah, we had a few toys revealed. We had uh, ha, 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 Titan Class Omega Supreme. We have a release date for these, so I'll go through all of this info as well. Uh, which will be August the first. He will be one hundred and sixty dollars and ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's coming with a Countdown, who we talked about before. Uh, we have Deluxe Impactor, not bunged with Mirage, but bunged on his own, uh, mm-hmm. coming out the 1st of October, uh, 1999. Uh, he's apparently five inches. He's he's a standard Deluxe figure. We'll t- again, we'll talk about his individual bits later. Commander mm-hmm. Jetfire, so leader Jetfire. Uh, the first no, of no, all, no, no. He's he's 11 inches tall. Oh, he's oh, geez, he's bigger. He is uh, almost a foot tall. He's huge. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. My, my, uh, thank you for catching that, Mikey. Hmm. Uh, he's $80. Uh, and the last one up, I mentioned he was coming out 1st of August. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. And Mirage, who's also obviously a deluxe, is coming out on the 1st and will be $20. So, Mikey! Yes? Who do you want to talk about first? Do you want to go small or do you want to go big? I'm just going in the order of the pictures, to be honest. Uh, all right. That's fair. Okay. So, Impactor first, I suppose. That makes sense. What do you think of Impactor? How do you think well, they've turned out for uh, the first official Impactor toy? Wasn't he supposed to be a Decepticon? Don't worry about it. No one gave a shit about that poll. They, really? Hasbro certainly didn't give a shit about well, that yeah, poll. <laughs> that poll was vote for Impactor and who could come with him. Yes. Otherwise known as what I'm calling the coattail guy. <laughs> um, so this is an original design. I've checked. It's not directly lifted from either of his previous designs. It's a hybrid of vote. Okay. Um... And then he turns into what is basically a, an Earth tank with Impactor's gun on top. Yes. And a cow catcher. Yes. Um, 
So this is the one everyone was excited about. This is the one that people voted for, they wanted, they loved. He's alright. Okay. He, seem, he seems like he's upset about something. He does. He's got a big pot on. Like, not like, grr, angry, like, that was my last piece of cake. That was my cake. Didn't get any chocolate cake today. I bought this specially. You need to save my cake. It, it, it is a fairly sad looking expression. And I, I, I mean, I'm not crazy about this toy overall. I no. don't like the head sculpt. Um, no, the, the head sculpt's trash. Unless it comes of, out better in life, it's gabo. The at legs are super, super hollow. Yeah. Um, the hook end is basically just flip his arm around and put a gun in there and pretend it's a hook. I'm going to assume he actually has a, a proper hand in there as well. Yeah, no, I can see it inside. Yeah. Um, he just looks very basic. And then the... Okay, I know that for all their other guys, they're kind of going with the, oh, it's basically inert mode, but with bits on. Mm-hmm. But Impactor has never had inert mode. No. Except for that one time he was a car that ran over Springer. Um, <laughs> so why not just give him, why not even go for something vaguely like the IDW design since this is a hybrid design, like make his robot mode more Marvel and then make his vehicle mode more IDW rather than just get a tank and put an extra thing on top. Yeah. I'm remarkably unimpressed by this mm. considering that his wave mate is Mirage and I could give less of a fuck about Mirage as a character. Mm. And I think he's a better looking toy. Um, yeah, I'm remarkably disappointed. He has good use of the battle damage paint by the looks of it. Does he? I can't see much of it. Or is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, it's just like yeah, around, okay. just above the threads on the, uh, the vehicle. Oh, mode. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. So what's what's your take on him? Not good. Uh, I think if you didn't rec- uh, if you recolored him anything other than Impactor, he would look like a generic grunt and not a good mm. one. Like he looks like a background character in a video game. Mm. Uh, his head design is off. It's really angular. Uh, it, it doesn't match any. Again, doesn't actually match any of the Impactor designs. No, I don't think it. From what I recall, I don't think it feels like it matches too hard with the rest of the the line either. No, it's that weird pout that's getting me. Yeah. Um, the robot mode's just really boring. It's got no really good, strong silhouette. Uh, people mm. have made, mentioned it before, but he has a tummy on his his entire torso. Yes. Like, the, the giant pecs are, are eyes, and then the, uh, the, the yellow on his abs are basically the inside of the mouth. Yes. Um, I would actually prefer this toy if I removed the head. And pretended that was his face. Yes. That would actually be quite sick. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But like you said, the the tank mode is just a tank, but with a cow catch and a shockwave gun on the top of it. Uh, And there's no reason you couldn't have done something else. They they made at least Megatron's tank something. It's still very Mm. much an Earth tank, I think, but it's got a bit more interest to it than that. Mm, I, I honestly thought when I saw this picture, I thought someone had repainted a brawl toy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Because I thought they were like, did they repaint the Combiner Wars one? It's... And then I looked at the robot mode and they're like, no, no, it's 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 re- original. But From my perspective, like yours, it seems, it's a very, very bland figure. And it's such a... Sh- to me, it's such a shame that this is the second impact of figure that we had because I just recalled we had that terrible Combiner one mm. that no one talks about. So when can we get a good impact of toy? Never, Andy. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. What a disappointment. Mm. It kind of reinforces that I'm not a big Siege fan at the moment. Like, nothing's I, grabbing me from the line at I'm all. I'm seeing good engineering and bad designs. Or at least designs <laughs> that are not working for me. Yeah, like, the, and the I've best seen some of them in Prime, person. And I just I've don't seen care some about of them in, Yeah, I've seen some of them in person now. And, like, Shockwave's the only one that speaks to me. Yes. Yeah, that's the only one. Yeah, mm. I would agree there. Um, anyway, you mentioned Mirage. So Mirage, why not yes. talk about Mirage? He looks better. He looks a lot better. He actually looks like Mirage, so that's a plus. I he's... would say, I would, th- I would say as well, he's the best Mirage toy we've had. He's not the most unique, but he's the best version yes. of a G one Mirage. He looks well designed. He looks poseable. He's got a nice. His expression is a bit animated and alive, and doesn't mm-hmm. have weird pouty lips. Yes. Um. The. It looks like he's got well placed uh ports for the effects parts. 
if you want to use him. Mm-hmm. His vehicle mode looks fine. Um, no, he doesn't. Like, I'm, I'm not blown away. I'm not freaking out. I just think he looks quite a bit better than Impactor. Yeah, I think he is a successful version of Mirage. I just don't care that much about Mirage. Because the last mm. version we got was the Combiner Wars one, and that was just a basic retool of Dead End, and not even a very good one, so it was a bit mm. dull. And the previous one to that, that I remember, was the Classics one, which was very much not a G1 Mirage. Right? Yes. Yeah. So this, is, if you were wanting, if you were jonesing for a, a G1-style Mirage, this is, I guess, going to be real good for you. I, w- mm. I would assume. Uh, I, I guess the next bigger one between the two big uh, boys here are, is Skyfire or Jetfire. And it is yeah. very much Skyfire. It's 1,000% yeah, Skyfire. People are freaking about this guy. I could see why. I, mean, I understand why. The thing is, a lot of people, I never thought I'd see this design in physical plastic. Mm. Um, apart from the fact, I'm sure we've had third-party versions of this guy. We've had a lot of third-party versions of I would have thought... Skyfire would have been a relatively easy design to do. Uh-huh. Because he doesn't turn into anything. He's a brick with wings. <laughs> so I wouldn't have thought it was that big a challenge, to be honest. Well, it's the first time we've ever seen it, so true, maybe it true. was. I like, he's going to be huge as well. Like, you can beat children with this. <laughs> he's got to be the size of a child. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he ain't small, that's for sure. And what else? He's Like, he's got a gimmick where he can drop deluxes off. Really? Yeah, like you, like he's gonna be a car carrier. A, oh, that's a neat. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. If if all I had was that vehicle mode and that robot mode, I'd be just like, okay, he looks competently done. But to say there was a more boring character in G one would be hard. Mm. But then they went and did something that appeals to me. What did they do? They went. Let's macross this boy. Yes. Um. So he's got extra pieces, so he can just it's very little stuff like extra guns. Some stuff for his wings, a helmet, and a chest piece. But it's significantly different enough that they're yes. not going to get sued. Yes. I assume. <laughs> Hopefully. But he looks... Oh, to be fair, it feels like it's not so different that they're not like flipping someone off at um, Harmony Gold. Agreed. But, <laughs> yeah. It just changes the aesthetic of the toy. It gives it a different vibe. It's the lab- I'm more into it as a real robot than I am in- than I'm into it as a Transformer. Okay. Hmm. What about yourself? I think the extra armor parts add a lot more color to it. Uh, mm. I'm not a massive fan of the boob plate, as it should probably be known as. Booby plate. But I do like the face. Uh, I think the new head for it is 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 fairly good and solid. Uh, the guns are pretty cool. Um, I'd almost take off the, the barrels of the guns and have them as like stubbed machine guns or something like that. Uh, and I do like the addition of the missile thingies on the ends of his wings. Again, it just adds a bit more color because the Skyfire toy without this, the, the extra bits of red and black on it, uh, he's he's very much his TV design, which he should be. It's it's what they're going for. But he is very white. And it's very boring because there's not much to him. Uh, granted, you could add your own colour to him by putting him in the sun and, turn him, and turning him a lovely shade of yellow. Uh, yellowy brown plastic. Uh, unless plastic doesn't do that these days, I'm not sure. But he does have the kind of dirt around his legs for the... Uh, the the what's it the wall paint kind of stuff, uh, which is fine. I I just don't care that much about. Again, it's another character that I just don't care that much about. Um, I think it's good that it's out there because it's the first time people can get a legit version of Skyfire. But I just don't care, unfortunately. But- All right, Mikey, do you want to take us on and uh, give us your thoughts on Omega Supreme, the big boy? Um, and Countdown, of course, him too. He I has guess. a gray alien face. Who does? Omega. Yeah. It looks yeah. like they put a grey alien in a in a bucket. The it's the eyes, isn't it? Yeah, it's the big eyes. It looks like he's going to probe me. Yeah, I, mm, I I don't know why they did that. I don't know, but I also kinda dig it a little bit more for being that little bit weird. I, I don't. It throws me <laughs> off, personally, um, quite a bit. Gotta say, I think the base robot looks pretty competently done. Yeah. Um, the transformation. People are saying like it's got a bit of Gal Gadot to it, but I think they may be seeing what they want to see. What do they mean? Um, it's got a bit of well, Gal Gadot to well, it. Well, like, so some people are saying like you put the whole rocket in at the back to form the arms, but going by how that work, looking at it now, I think it's more like you just you have these round sockets that you slide two pieces of a rocket into. All right. Yeah. Just because he he has proper shoulders and everything else. Yeah, and that yellow is, doesn't seem to be contained on the rocket at least. Yeah. Um, 
Well, robot mode looks pretty competently done. Um, the base mode looks fun for what it is, on all honesty. I'm kind of into it mm. more than I thought I would be. Yeah. And Countdown looks like Countdown. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm not blown away. Omega Supreme's design is never one that's really spoken to me when it's in its sort of classic form, but I do like the effect part it comes with quite a bit. Ah, uh, the, uh, the, the on-fire Christmas tree. Yeah, it's so wise to have painted that. Yes. Um, but no, I think he's good. I he's probably the least interesting Titan to me. Even like, and I'm saying that with someone who got pretty frustrated with Predator King. <laughs> um, but um, it, it's one of those stories that I can see why other people are flipping out about it, even if I'm not. Yeah. Well, what about you? Uh, apart from the the weird face, uh, I think the decisions on him have been good. Uh, the mm. proportions, unlike Predator King, are on point, but they don't obviously need to worry about combining like five robots together to make a a coherent robot so they've got that on its side Mm. Uh, i like how in the promotional art it looks like uh, countdown's just going to drive into omega supreme's tank mode for whatever reason um base mode's okay it's a bit on the simple side but i i guess that's kind of what base modes are anyway so it's Mm. it's hard to really bitch about it and the rocket's fine it's just you you know the two arms uh yeah, it's fine. It's it's literally just the face. It's literally just the face I really dislike strongly because it's just weird. At least in these images we have here, mm. uh, and Countdown seems like he's a decent representation of Countdown. I like how he seems to have a old angry man face. <laughs> yeah, very kind of in the cup uh, realm of things. Mm. So why are people? Why do you say, uh, Mikey? People, what 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 are other people saying that they're excited about for, for um... Omega? Giant G1 style Omega Supreme. Oh my god, it's such a cool design. He reminds me so much of my childhood. This is what I always pictured when I had the toy when I was a child. Yada yada yada. Usual stuff. Oh, okay. Not, okay. not having a dig at anyone. It's just like the usual very heavy nostalgia trip for the aesthetics. Right. I thought you meant and that the there was something a bit more to it than the the usual stuff that they they were going. And to be over. honest, the simple fact this toy exists. Uh, you know, an official Titan class Omega Supreme is not something people ever really expected up until a few years ago. I was going to say, like, as soon as the Titan stuff coming out, I was like, it's going to happen. We all knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Everybody knew. Mm. Uh, anyway, Mikey takes on to our next bit of news. It's a, yeah. probably a, a probably a quickie because we haven't covered a huge amount of the card stuff. Yeah, so we don't usually cover it unless it's something new or special. Um, like, they've been revealing a bunch of combiners and, like, I, we haven't really felt a need to go into them. Nah. Like, but what they have revealed is the first triple changer cards... So the way these are going to work is that uh, the robot mode will have an effect that um, when you do whatever it is, in the case of the first one, Blitzwing, uh, when you attack and you flip at least an orange and blue pip, draw a card, and after the battle uh, point, you flip him over to one of his uh, uh, vehicle modes. Um, These are going to be on the opposite sides. He's going to have a tank and a jet, and they're going to have different effects, and they have different attack and defense stats. Um, the robot mode has terrible defense by the looks of it, um, but it gets better. And, but like these guys are offset, like they've got big health, but they've got very high star ratings, which means you ain't going to have a lot of characters playing against them. Mm. Um, but like the so the jet mode will let you use the new effect stealth, which means that um, he can't be attacked as long as another character is available to be attacked. And the tank will have brave, which means someone has to attack him no matter how, who else is on the field. So he can basically function as a damage sponge or a stealth attacker in the background. Hmm. Which is interesting. Um, Springer, on the other hand, um, so his utility, while this has a utility, uh, he he has pierce, which allows him to do at least three damage. Um, they don't say the condition, if there's a special condition for him to transform. Um, or maybe Blitzwing can transform anyway, and it's just like, you have if you use his effect, you have to transform him. I would. Im- um, I can't imagine they'd lock that to a card because it's just transforming, hmm. and I guess it's the decision of which mode do I want to go to, right? Yeah. Uh, his effect is um, in car mode. Uh, while he has an armor, he has tough two. So flip two more battle cards when defending, and while he has a weapon, he has bold two. Flip two more battle cards when attacking. So that's to do with your increasing your defense and in- increasing your uh, attack stat. Um, but it's interesting. It's interesting they brought the triple changes in. I suspect they're going to add a lot of variety to things, but I also suspect that they are going to be somewhat limiting because you will not have a lot of characters to support them. You have a 25-star mm. limit, and these guys cost 12. So, 
that's that's quite a lot <laughs> uh, yeah um so it's going to be i suspect you're these guys are going to be a bit overly important and they're definitely going to be big targets which probably explains why they have quite high health stats um but no i think it's interesting these are going in um they're this game is getting way deeper than I ever expected it to. Yeah, I suppose they'll get weirder and weirder each time we get a new season, right? Mm, mm. Well, depending uh, how far they want to go. If they want to go into Headmasters and stuff, that could be really friggin' weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, I've got nothing else to say, Annette. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I think the idea behind it is neat. It's it's good that they're getting out, uh, more out of the idea of the uh, the bigger card that folds in half to show, you know, two things for for triple changes that's a that's a neat mm. idea i look forward to seeing how this goes and i'm sure i'll hear about it from uh, your and my buddy mr wayne yes uh, and if wayne doesn't tell us my god will wtf whether you ask or not <laughs> it's true <laughs> here come them boys uh but yeah andy take us on to the convention news yes well you may be surprised to hear that there are more guests for tfcon los angeles are there any attendees? Because it doesn't look like there's any room for them this year. Probably not. I'm sure we've made that joke before, but who cares? <laughs> we'll do it again. It, it's mm. it's applicable. Uh, because yep. on March 15th to the 17th, we have new guests announced. We have uh, Margaret Scott. Margaret Scott. Scott. Margaret, Margaret Scott. Scott. Uh, you should know her from her work on Till All of One, Transformers Prime, Rescue Bots, Robots in the Skies, and Cyberverse, and lots and lots of other things, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, we also have Mr. David Sobolov, who I didn't actually know was uh, Blitzwing in the Bumblebee movie. Um, you, it doesn't sound like him at first, but when he's lecturing Bumblebee and saying like, B-127, blah, 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 you're going to die for crimes <laughs> against things. It re- like, that's when he suddenly went, okay, that's David. Yeah, no, I didn't. Re- well, when when I was in the cinema, I dec- uh, didn't pick, it, uh, pick up on it. So that's mm. neat. Uh, he also uh, obviously did Depth Charge. And Shockwave from Transformers Prime. Yep. So you got him in. And you've also got John Bailey. The John of the Baileys who was voiced... Uh, the voice of Soundwave and Shockwave in the Bumblebee movie. Can we have a Shockwave off? A shock off. Yeah. A wave. <laughs> wave Look, off. Hey, we're all doing the Shockwave. So <laughs> oh, that uh, sounds... But Andy, he also played lame. Optimus in an excellent cartoon that I'm, I've been told occasionally was much better than I give it credit for. Where? Where was it? It was on the... No, no, we don't know. It doesn't exist anymore. It exactly. <laughs> There's no evidence that show existed, unfortunately. And I'm, I actually mean that legitimately for the for the mm. actors who uh, well, got no, fucked off. Combiner Wars there is, because that's on a DVD with last night. Is it? Got a oh, Blu- God, that yeah, got of course a Blu-ray. It is. That was a Blu-ray extra. Ah. It was just Everything the first yet. one, though. Titan's yeah, Return the, wasn't done, though, right? Titan Return and Power of the Prime's like... Pfft. Pfft. Oh, well. Lame. Lion. But it's good that John's uh, getting to go to a convention as a Transformers mm. voice actor. I'm sure he'd be pretty fucking pumped uh, for that shit. Yeah, in like, hey, we've got major main screen, ma- ma- sort of like major, you know, big screen actor now, John Bailey. Yeah, not major. I'm reading the lines for this promo, John Bailey. <laughs> like, yeah. don't think he's done any other voice acting in cinema yet, has he? Uh, I honestly don't know. To be honest, mm. I've John, no idea. If you're listening, tell us. I know you read the Twitter. I know you're there. I see you. Sounds sinister, Mikey. It's supposed to. But yeah, there you go. Uh, that's all the news for this week, uh, Mr. Mikey. So as yeah. ever, I'm going to throw the question at you like a horrible pie full of knives. What have you been up to this week, sir? Oh, let's see what's relevant to today. Um, Common Rider Geo 21, um, mm-hmm. which was the Ryuki episode with a twist. What uh, a twist? I, there was a twist, and I don't mind saying the twist because... The show does no efforts to hide it whatsoever. Um, the another writer is not another Ryuki, right? It it's another Ryuga. That's right. I've seen the the show yeah. designs for that that popped up. Yeah, cool designs, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they do play into it like the whole mirror world and everything else. Um, so yeah. Um, not the best written episode, but there's some cool stuff in it. Okay. Um. Uh. It just they're setting up the mid season upgrade, and I think they put more into the mid-season upgrade than they necessarily needed to. <laughs> is it, Oh, is that the one that looks like um, the decayed final form where it's just got shitty symbols of Kamen Riders all over it? No, that's the previous. Well, no, no, no. Like, so that's... They revealed the final form during the week and I think one of the... I think it that's was a movie form. It. Like a golden... 
because it's like, oh, he's not Omegio in his final form, he's Grandio. Right. And it, oh, but I really hope that's one that looks better in physical than it does in picture. I'm not sure, because it looks garbage. It does look garbage, yes, that's why I'm hoping, because the, the new form um, doesn't look too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, that's the one with the extra belt, isn't it? Which is yeah, a bit weird. No, that one looks a, okay. It's got a terrible name. What's its name? Geo Two. Ooh. <laughs> mm. um, and, <laughs> that was like, that was done at the last minute, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. This one thing I'm going to complain about. This series really suffered from artificial escalation of the fights. Okay. Because basically, he's had the decade form since episode eleven or twelve, mm. something like that. Um, around at least that area, hasn't used it once against any of the... Like, in a fight where he needed it. Barred a time he fought Decade. And all Decade did was stop using other rider form and kick the shit out of him anyway. Yay. Um, but, like, he was, like, when he was fighting a new rider, um, it's been weeks now, I'll just use his name, um, Kamen Rider was. When he was fighting him, I was sitting to just, just use the Decade form. Or just using the regular and other rider forms. No, no. Oh, well, how could he be stronger than me when I have another form to access? Um, that kind of thing, like, builded that sometimes as well, this artificial, like, oh god, how am I going to win this fight? You, you, you could win this quite easily. Um, and, and so, there's, I don't get why I didn't use the decade form in this episode. Mm. Would have made sense. Um, but no, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm curious how they wrap up the Mirror World stuff. Um, I think the new form looks decent, it just, you know, um, some of the writing is a bit off, but, like, this is a... Overall, an enjoyable but average season now. Okay. Um, also, Decade's not in this one, but it is kind of all his fault. Oh, good. Okay. It is Honor- Honore Decado. <laughs> um, it's just like, god damn it. Uh, which is also like, the actor must have something else on at the moment, or he'd had a limited contract for a while, because they clearly want him involved in the story somehow. Mm. Um, and I would like to see him come back, because this Decade is way better than he used to be. Um... Also watch Tokusatsu Gaga episode three. Um, four is out, but it hasn't been subbed. Okay, so you've seen um, two more. Uh, yeah, two because you'd only seen the first episode last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I watched episode two as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, this is a really good show. Good, really good show. Um, dealing with a lot of emotional stuff. Still, the, yeah, yeah. Episode oh, three man. is basically what happens when you think you found someone who could be into the same thing as you, but they're a lot more nervous about revealing in a way despite okay. the fact that the main character is terrified of anyone ever finding out but um a lot more of a geek in the nile type of person ah right okay the thing they're cool who is also no no who not necessarily cool but they are not a the new character is not sociable not into people on any level quite aggressive <laughs> and she you know it's you're, you're the main character is still very desperate for having more friends yes which, so, but no, oh, it play, it's really well written. There's some neat stuff with the child, the child character who we don't know his name because we like most of the characters bar one or two, they're known by the nickname she gives them. Right. So the guy who runs a toy shop, she called him Mr. Yakuza because he <laughs> looks like one. And the kid, she he freaked her out at first, so she called him Damien. Ah, oh, nice. And now she just keeps calling him Damien, and he hates and goes, "That's not my name. Shut up, Damien." <laughs> um, and like he has a thing where he hates going to cram school. Because he's, you know, he's a small child. He does not want to spend his evening sitting in a cram school. But what a show. Japan. Yeah. Um, and so what he does, like, he went the, the he goes to a tunnel, a walkway across the way to that takes him under the road. But he doesn't have to. There's a shortcut above ground. But he goes into the tunnel, pretends it's a base for launching the, the Sentai show he likes. And suddenly, instead of going to school, he's running through on a deployment mission. Huh. And I thought that was really sweet. Yes. That's very and much thought, a kid thing to do. Yeah, and it's playing on the fact that he's doing something he really doesn't want to do, and he's getting... One of the things this is all about is that whether you're an adult or a child, if you're into this stuff, you're usually getting something positive out of it that's giving you a more positive outlook on things. I just wait, do you think the villain of the show will be someone on the internet talking about the show in a really derogatory way? No, the villain of the show is the mother. <laughs> the mother... Oh, her mother. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, Our mothers in general, I think. Because the mother is <laughs> quite unpleasant. Right. And one of those ones who you know she's supposed to be sympathetic in that she is doing it for the right reasons, inverted commas. Yeah. But it is also, she completely rejects who her daughter is. Right. In favor of your X number of years, I want you married by the time you're 30, I want you having a child by the time you're 32, I want you having a house after that. Oh, God. And, but she is just like, nothing you care about matters. Mm. What matters is that you care about the things I tell you to care about. Yeah. 
And yeah, uh, like she is the overarching villain because it seems like most of the characters are represented by someone from the Toku shows. Okay. And her consistent representation is the bad guy from the Sentai show, um, which got slightly creepy when the, she did a flashback to her childhood where her mother was dressing her and telling her like, oh, you look so pretty now. And then cuts to the Toku villain who's like wolf, a purple wolf <laughs> monster. And it's like really deep voice going like, you're so pretty now. Oh, God. <laughs> I love you in this dress. And it's just like, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I need an adult. I need an adult. I am an adult. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, what else this week? Uh, Genlock episode four, mm-hmm. um, which, hey, Andy, hey. did you know this stuff is uh, one of the inspirations for the series with the works of Gen Robachi? Oh, yes, you may have mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, there's a moment at the end of just like, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this show has quite some dark stuff in it anyway, like where you feel like if they weren't limited in animation budget, we'd be seeing quite a bit more splatter. Right. Um, but there is a fight. We have our first mech fight and it's pretty well coordinated. Um, but there's a moment where someone's in there and you remember that these robot bodies have sensors that basically function as your own body. And then there's a lot of screaming. There's a lot of screaming. Mm. Really well done, well acted screaming. <laughs> Um, but yeah, most of the episode is actually sort of playing on the team dynamic. We What this seems to be doing is very much presenting it as an ensemble show. Apart from the main guy, Chase, we're not getting a lot of individual time with everyone. Right. But they're they're also highlighting the fact that these guys don't really have individual time. They're, they're in a military base. They get up, they work, and they go to bed. Mm. Um, and, but we have them, like, so, socializing a bit on the their equivalent of the internet. It's called the Ether. Um, and they, yeah, it's like, it was a fun episode. Like, I love this show. This is a really good show. The, the sh- episode is getting a lot of talk for one particular reveal about a character. Okay. Um, to do with their gender status, because it turns out someone's gender fluid. Right. Um, which the internet obviously is exploding about. Some people are very angry about this. Um, some people aren't. It interests me because of how they portrayed it. Um, because it was very sci-fi in how they portrayed it. Mm-hmm. Because if you've ever heard of a fellow called Elam Banks, which may or may not have, he did a, a book series called The Culture, which is very pop, popular. And it has things where humans, the gender and sex, like people shift it constantly. Like you, you go through a, a genetic re-sequencing and you're a girl a month later. And there was like, there's one character, he gets turned into a girl, gets pregnant, gives birth, changes back to a man. And then next time he, he, he enjoys being pregnant. So he just, he's done this like six or seven times. Hmm. But back in, like, the one book where it's, like, everyone's freaked out by this one guy who's never had a transition into a woman. Everyone's like, that's weird. Why are you like this? And just like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want to. Um, and he also ends up having quite, not very, like, quite explicit sex with a character who is, like, midway between male and female. All right. Like, I think they were, they were... Okay, when he met them, they were female. Then he went away. Then when he came back, they were male. Then he went away again. Then they were changing back to female. But yeah, so the character in this, and I won't spoil it for who, um, they're doing that. They've been physically one sex, and then they've physically been another sex and another gender, and they're shifting. They're doing actual, like, genetic manipulation stuff. Yeah. And they're just jumping backwards and forth, depending on how they feel at the time. And I like that. That's a cool sci-fi idea. That is a science fiction idea. That's not... That doesn't feel to me like someone is representing because we need to have representation. That feels like, okay, we want to have this in there, but can we make it cool in sci-fi? Rather than just saying, and here's our gender fluid character, and this is what they will be labeled as. And in every other way, they'll be completely like a modern day person. Because I, I, if you're doing a sci-fi where people have implants in their eyes and can pretend that they're in front of a live studio audience at any point in the day, you might as well play with the sci-fi nature of it. That's my opinion. Um, but I thought it was well handled. I thought it was interesting. Um, I'm wondering if... Because I wouldn't be shocked if they switched the character over for a while. I'm just wondering if they'll change their voice actor when they do. Mm-hmm. Don't know. Um, but no, uh, good show. Um new mech design in it which was cool um people should be watching the show it's difficult enough to watch you have to either rooster teeth it or pirate it but i've got rooster teeth so i'm happy um good show very good show good stuff uh last thing was i saw yesterday alita battle angel all right so i'm not overly familiar with the manga um 
which like I found out today uh, the the name is a very is one of those very early 90s things where people just rename things willy-nilly to try and make it sound more western and cool because <laughs> okay. her name in her Japanese name is Gally mm. and she's named after a cat oh um whereas in the movie they add more depth to it but she's named Alita and like they I went I, I checked out a couple of things that are just like a lot of names are changed with with the transfer because it was your you know early manga translation and no one thought we'd ever figured out what these funny foreign names were sure um so i don't have much to comment on the story i actually read the chapters of the manga that correspond today they definitely hit a lot of the beats like a lot of the core beats to the point where i think the character suffered a bit because it's very much these are key scenes from the manga that we're including we're putting our own spin on a lot of stuff but there are a lot of like okay we've done that scene tick we've done that scene tick um the action scenes are really well done. Um, the aesthetic is not the same as a manga, but it's what you'd get from a manga like that today. That kind of grungy, post-apocalyptic, made of blades look. Right. Um, Alita, she's well played. Her It does take you a while to get used to the visuals, because it's not just they made her eyes anime S, they've actually made her mouth anime-sized. Oh, okay. So it, it's actually a bit smaller than it would be in a normal human. Mm. So it's a little visually distracting, especially since... Almost no one else has that kind of exaggeration in their features. But they do have a story reason for it. Um, is it a good story reason or is it just a story no, reason? Just, way like, uh, okay. It's just okay. This is just something you did. Like, um, It's probably the best manga adaptation period I've seen. Not and, and high praise. Not high praise. Um, it is not a blow your mind movie. Um, it's a six or a seven. Right. But again, for a manga adaptation, that's like four points so higher than I usually give them. Mm. Um, definitely the best live action Western adaptation of a Japanese of a Japanese medium I can think of. What do you mean? What about Dragon Ball Evolution? Hey, Andy, they're doing. A, they have a license for a Gundam and an Evangelion movie. <laughs> I know, and Akira, which yeah. they still haven't done anything with. But, but is it Johnny Depp in that, or is it Keanu Reeves? In what? I I swear Akira. one of them is in Akira. Uh, oh, I can't remember. No. But, now, honestly, like, I'm not sure this is a cinema movie. But it's definitely a good Netflix film. Like, a really good, solid watch it at home, in your own homestead kind of thing. Okay. Like, I saw it as a matinee. I saw it for five euros. I saw it cheap. Um, but it was enjoyable. I really liked it a lot more than I wanted. And I honestly wanted to, because, you know me, I do resist a lot of the live-action adaptations these days. True. Um, it's not a happy movie. <laughs> um, there is a, There is no, like... They don't rewrite the story to Americanize it. Like I said, they're hitting the core beats. And from what I've seen, the core beats of Battle Angel, Alita, Gunnam, or whatever you want to call it, um, are not happy beats. You know? Mm. Uh, and they they don't want to, you know, move away from that. Also, like, one thing, this movie really would have benefited from being 18 R-rated. Um, because they pushed the violence quite a bit further than you really should for a movie this age rating. Um, like, I could hear a small child in the front of the audience, and there was one particular scene I'm just saying, like, you're going to have nightmares tonight, kid. <laughs> um, but it's one of the things you could tell they wanted to do more. They're, like, they pushed it further because it was robots yeah. and cyborgs and stuff, but they wanted to do a bit more with it. And it was just like, if you could have gotten that R rating, if you couldn't gotten that 18 rating, then... Because the manga, like, the 10 chapters I've read, graphic. Graphically violent. Not much in the way of, like, nudity or sex, but definitely a lot of, like, brains and exploding and stuff like that. Kind of um, that old-school 90s anime yeah, that yeah. happened. Um, yeah, I think it's worth checking out. Like I said, I, I've not a lot of familiarity with the source p material. I have a friend who's, like, hilariously into it. Um, so she may have a very different opinion of the quality of this. But I thought it was pretty entertaining for what it was. Yeah, like, good. which, again, like... I have refused to see almost, like, I've seen a bit of the Bleach one, but I don't want to see any more, really. So it was nice to go to one of these things and go, like, okay, someone give a shit. Because yeah. it felt like that was it. It felt like the reason they're hitting those beats, even if it does make the movie suffer a bit, um, is because they're like, okay, I like the source material. Okay, I want to make sure these cool things from the source material are in here, even if other things are sacrificed along the way. Mm -hmm. Also, there's robot dogs. Um... No, like, oh, oh, I would say, like, um, blatant sequel setup. But I don't think that's a bad thing, 
because the last thing I wanted to see was them try to pack how, because I think the manga is actually still going, so 20 years worth of story into two and a bit hours. Mm. Like, they always try with these things. So they said, okay, here's two volumes, you know, about two hours worth of material, no matter how we're adapting it. Here you go. Well, if we get a sequel, we'll continue on. If not, you can fill in the gaps yourself. Um, so yeah, that was me. What about you, Andy? Um, I, I've, I've done bits and pieces this week. Uh, obviously, poop casting, uh, editing, and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. I went to see my buddy Matt on Wednesday, so went round, had a walk, had some fun chatting, lad stuff. Um, edit, uh, did the podcast with you and Mr. Jason Kirk on Thursday, which was for the patron show, uh, which will be coming out at some point. Uh, which is on uh, Gridman. It, it flew out of my head there. Yeah, we did it on Gridman, <laughs> so I had that. Uh, and I went on Saturday to go and see Gruff down in Carlisle. So I had fun. Uh, went around some places oh, uh, to, you, to Warhammer. And uh, we did some Warhammer stuff because uh, it was the Carlisle, uh, what, 24th anniversary or something like that? I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and I got... Uh, not a huge amount, uh, but at the at the Warhammer World, uh, at the Warhammer, I should say, they had a little competition going on, which was they got a load of sprues on the table, and they said, okay, if you want to scratch build yourself something, uh, it can go in a competition to be judged, and I got an honorary mention, and since the prizes were judged by the roll of the dice, one of the prizes was a massive box full of the, the spare sprues and pieces that weren't used. So I've got a ridiculously massive box full of just Drakari pieces, Tyranid pieces, random mm. bits of orcs and all this other stuff, and I have no idea what to do with any of it. <laughs> um, so that's that's good. It was really, really fun times. Um, I got a White Dwarf magazine because I'm going to do a little reading for Grifflock for the Fluff and Hammer. Mm. Uh, I was gifted by the store manager for some reason uh, an old White Dwarf from, uh, it was like 209, uh, which was back a long 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 time ago back in the ye olden days um and that was about it really it was just a really fun day out uh, to see uh, mr gruff and see abby as well Good. uh yeah it was hell of fun uh, that's really been my week it's just been kind of going out seeing some people and then just chilling doing doing the podcasting and then just kind of cracking on with a uh, bit of painting here and there throughout the week so uh, yeah, that'll do us for this week, Mister Mikey, because I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary. Any everything that I've been watching is just like more, more Star Trek Enterprise, really. Uh, thank you guys for joining us this week. It's been fun as ever, Mikey. Where can people find you in the on the internet if you want them to? You can find me on Twitter as Irish Paleo. You can find me on YouTube as Gwolf V3. You can also send us feedback if you want at the Moonbase Two email. It's the Moonbase Two at gmail dot com. And you can send it at the Moonbase 2 Twitter, at the Moonbase 2. Um, we do have some feedback this week on there. Oh? Yes, so this is from Jonathan Barrett. Or Jonathan Barnes, sorry. Um, your email address gives a different name. Are you a tissue of lies? Um, but I, w- I want to say Barrett because I was thinking of someone else. It's not your fault. It's my fault. I'm in the wrong. Um, so this was actually, I think it's in response to the show Chris and I did. And it's a little oh, bit of a lengthy one. The co- um, what, what do we? Why do we collect? One? Why do we collect? So you know, okay. um, definitely was looking for feedback for that one for a while. So Jonathan, thank you for this. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Long time listener. Think I've listened to them all. You poor man. Oh um, love the show about why we collect, and also the conversations you have regarding adult collecting toys and not having that social outlet to discuss these things within. You should really be watching Tokusatsu Gaga. Ga, ga. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. Um, I have some mates who are into it. Into shall we say mainstream geekery? They've read a few movie i uh, read a few comics watched a few movies but then when i try to go deeper than that i can see their faces glaze over and that's when i know to dial it back we've all got a friend like that are, are they fans of the big bang theory oh if they are <laughs> they should not be your friends you should disown them it's a terrible series um same with my family when they ask what i want for a birthday or christmas i just say money or clothes mm. uh, because i know that if i say well those one six scale he-man figures from mondo are are looking fucking sweet they will no doubt roll their eyes and not buy them they are though <laughs> to be fair they are pretty sweet for what they are yeah um familiar tales with all of your listeners i imagine Anyway, I never looked into why I collected these things before. I always just assumed that it was because I liked the franchises of whatever it was, and that was it. But the older I got, the more developed these collector, uh, the more I developed this collector's mentality of having to have things completed. If I was to try and dissect this, I would say that because my dad died when I was young, I have always tried to go back to those things that by sur- those times by surrounding myself with things that I was into them into then. 
um, Transformers being at the top of that period pyramid. However, while that may be in a small part true, I don't think it is the main reason I collect. While I do collect, uh, do only collect things I love, Transformers, TMNT, Street Fighter, etc., uh, one of the main reasons I collect is that I like to have a list of things and then get everything on that list. As I'm writing this, I understand it sounds OCD, but I hope that you guys and the listeners can relate. I think we've all done that at one point or another. Hmm. Um, like, especially if you're collecting stuff like those little, um, uh, what do they call them? Because bot bots is it like bot bots and all the little small figures we've had over the years that or Lego minifigs, Jesus Christ, blind bag like, things. Yeah, yeah. Um, if everyone's got a checklist for that, if you're serious into it. Uh, if I see something like Wave One of a certain thing and there's six figures, I love to have those six. That's something that's nice and neat and boxed away. Then if I go on the internet and see loads of variants. Fuck me, I've got to go and hunt them. It's crazy, which is why I try to go for the higher price lines, as there aren't as many released through the year. Uh, I hope this jarble mess of an email makes sense. I hope my jarble reading of it made sense. And I hope there are <laughs> listeners out there who can relate. Basically, yeah, I like the franchise design, but I also like to complete collections. Love the show, guys. Take it easy. Jono. That's the, that's um, the worst part about being a collector. It's just like, I have to complete the thing. <laughs> especially when it's when you're picking up something you're like ah i don't really want it but it's the last thing i need i need the thing i need the thing <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm dying for it because i don't know about you but i've been there oh we've all been there yeah like i went my first major collecting event was um 2007 where i bought the entire movie line oh god in one mm. go yeah, not well not like i as it came out right so I was there, like, I would go into Smith's every Friday checking what was new. I also made them, like, uh, like the month before the I started doing this, the classics came out, and I, like, in Ireland anyway, and I um I remember, like, I was in there at, like, half seven on a Friday. On a Friday. They were just about to close in, like, 20 minutes. I saw, like, they had the box with the classics figures, the classic Voyagers in it, yeah. and I literally made someone open it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, can I have these? And just like, yeah, they're in the system. Good, bye. Um, just imagine yeah. you reeing at them until they opened it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up with the entire movie line over a period of a year, and I also ended up getting rid of most of that movie line within a period of six months because yeah. I didn't like most of them. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, so I I got them to get a checklist. So no, we've all been there. Mm-hmm. Just. It's part of it. Like, I think one of the things um, Chris made a good point about in that podcast is that your collecting habits change so much by the time you've been in this and you'll never realize it until you sit down and, and actually go over it. Mm. Um, but no. Uh, anything else you want to say on this one, Andy? Uh, I don't think so. No. Yeah, but like really good email. Thank you. Really good bit of feedback. Uh, guys, feel free to send anything similar. Yeah. Um, Andy. Yes. Mark it. Uh, first off, we have a message from Tentomon number four. Uh, so, what are you dudes hoping to see at Toy Fair next week? Uh, and also, sorry, also, did you know that trying to write uh, a post on the smartphone is a fucking pain in the ass to do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, oh, due to lag. Oh, yeah. Right. Andy, do you have any preference for Toy Fair next week? Actual figures, because uh, your and my worry before this show started was... Have they shown everything for Toy Fair mm. with those three figures? Or is there, are they actually going to have anything to show? Or is it just going to be those figures, just physical forms of them? Like, yeah, I'm I'm a bit concerned about that. Yep. Um, I also like don't want to be like, we've got loads of new bot-bots. And I'm like, I love bot-bots, but I don't... Please don't make that your entire advertisement for the Toy Fair. Um, like... I don't know, because I know... At least one Decepticon. Yeah, I would like... To, I would just like to see... Why is an Impact... Impact is supposed to be a Decepticon? I See, I don't care about that, because uh, mm. as we said during the show, I'd, neither of us like that mold, so I would... No. Like, it being Decepticon wouldn't have made me care about it anymore. No. But, yeah, I, I think there's a lot to do. Uh, or a lot you could do. Um, like, I want to see maybe the complete prototype for that Armada Optimus, if if... If you it's a thing one, for this country. Yeah, with the trailer would be if you got that. Um, yeah. I, like, I'm just saying it's probably going to be stuff like Masterpiece Optimus prototypes or stuff like that. And I'm less, yeah. way less into that. Like, I'm to be honest, like with Toy Fair, I'm more into non-Transformer stuff. Because um, Mattel's going to be there and they might be announcing more of their Jurassic Park collector line. So I'm curious to be- about that. Do you think they'll um, show off season two figures for uh, Cyberverse? Whatever they may or may not be. Maybe, although it, 
it would oh, be quite it too early soon? for yeah. I think it might be a bit early for prototypes. It's it's weird though because it would be it'd be odd not to have the toy line, you know, continuing. Yeah, unless they've got more I'm, figures I'm pretty sure coming that the, out. I'm pretty but, sure for other uh, TV shows we've had in the past, they've always had the line going at least until the second season or the, yeah. the next season continued. And uh, I don't I think we've had animated. anything uh, except for animated. Which I don't, don't think we've had time. anything new uh, since the last batch of figures for it, right? No, no, it's been a good long while since we've had something new. Yeah, so. weird. I don't know. I hope there's something. I hope there's more. Like, I don't like the toy line, but I don't want it dying. No, no, exactly. I want it to I just want going. it to be good. Yeah. If it could make markable improvements like the R.I.D. one kind of did and then stopped mm. right at the end. Like, there was the bludgeon I still would, wouldn't say no to getting. And there was that uh, Autobot jet dude. What was he mm. called? Uh... It wasn't dogfire. It was, it was something super generic. Yeah, he was like a white sk- jet guy. Yeah, Skyburn or something stupid. Sky... Something. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Sky Sky. Sky Guy. Sky. That'll do. Sky Guy. <laughs> something like that. That's what I'm hoping for. Mm. Uh, at least one Decepticon at the very least. But That we'll... would be nice. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, is it next week? Yes. Yeah, oh, cool. Well, I guess we'll find out uh, in seven days' time, Mr. Mikey. Mm. Uh, you can find me, if you want to, on uh, Twitter as CCTFW. On YouTube is Cobra Commander TFW. You can find this podcast on the Moonbase 2 forums. One Twitter, we're on iTunes, we're on Facebook, we're on Libsyn. One YouTube as Moonbase 2 Transformers Podcast. And if you want to head over to patreon.com slash moonbase2 and do $2 each month, you get the extended version of From the Files to Teletron 2 a week early. You also get Moonbase Woo Woo, which I mentioned earlier in the show. Uh, we've talked about no uh, non-Transformer things, and if we do anything special, you get that a week early as well. And if you want to see my nonsense and my woo-woo, head over to ccbunker.weebly.com. Uh, so once again, Mikey, thank you as ever for joining me on this show. Thank you for having me, young Andy. Uh, and we will catch you next week, everybody, with, uh, well, I guess Toy Fair stuff, whatever that may or may not be. It'll either be a long show or a short show. It'll be short. We're Yay! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>